Okay, I think I think we're live. Let me check. Oh yeah, I saw something pop up on your channel. Eh? Let me see. I don't know if anyone's watching this, but live stream with Mr. Medicare. Okay, there we go. Um, why is the thumbnail that? God damn it. We got people in chat. What's up, chat? How you guys doing? We got Bass Richard Nixon in the chat. Very cool. Can you uh, can you hear us, Jim? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Am I coming through? Yeah. So let me just put this on. Just me. I don't know if anybody in the chat is familiar with Mr. Medicare or who he is, but we're gonna go on a deep dive into the the Jim eighty one Jim Mr. Medicare Internet Aristocrat lore. Went all the way back. Oh yeah, to 2007. So yeah, Mr. Medicare is one of my favorite uh, internet personalities. I guess you'd say what you make like fucking internet commentary type videos. Uh yeah, mostly. I, it's like stumbling across uh, really obscure shit or weird people or uh, like spastic events on the internet, that kind of stuff. Um, that's mostly what I focus on. And this has been going on for what damn near 15 years. Uh yeah, about that. Yeah. So it's really uh, you're like a, a dinosaur of the internet in a way. You're kind of uh, the last of a dying breed. I am. I am a dinosaur. I am a, a living fossil. A grandpa who uh, uh, is enjoying the twilight years of the internet. I guess. Yeah, grandpa Jim. So I guess yeah. we can just uh, jump right into this. So I guess we're gonna we're gonna do it in typical Medicare fashion, where if someone uh, donates, we'll handle that at the end of the stream. Sure. That sounds good. All right. So. Give me one second. Yeah, take your time, man. There we go. So, how did how did it all start, Jim? Give me give me the rundown. We're talking about you're in college. Mm -hmm. It's like 2006, 2007, and that's the first time you uh, post a video on YouTube, right? I think like the early YouTube stuff uh, that I did kind of grew out of because uh, at the time uh, like video game stuff was kind of coming into popularity it's not like it is now with like PewDiePie and all of that stuff where you've got people with like 100 million subs and there are people doing let's plays and making a million dollars every day uh, it was like you know kind of smaller channels like you had AVGN and stuff but you also had stuff like um, Armic 21 uh, Urinating Tree, Gaming Goose you know smaller kind of channels uh, some of them were like goons you know they did stuff on SA uh, some of them were just YouTubers. Um, and I watched, like, a lot of that stuff and enjoyed it. So I, that, that was kind of like my first foray, I guess, into um, into YouTube stuff, was making uh, almost, like, joke-like Let's Plays that were trash. Um, but that quickly changed once I started kind of looking around and just kind of coming across, like, really strange shit. Um, I think that was one of the more exciting things back in the day not that even you know it was even that long ago, but um, you could you could stumble across a community that was almost it was it was virginal, it was untouched, right? Because social media wasn't big, people weren't spreading it everywhere. You'd stumble across something, and it was so strange and weird, and the people involved in it were so bizarre uh, that you'd want to try to like present it, you know. And that's kind of how I got into it. Yeah, just like a small enclave of the internet. Yeah, essentially, yeah. And so just because I I don't have a, a clear timeline. You, sure. Before you made content, you are, you're frequenting like something awful forums, Medicare.org, and when, when, what's the timeline on all that stuff? Uh, yeah, so I did browse SA. Um, I used 4chan, uh, you know, kind of early on. Um, Medicare, that's like an offshoot. So uh, Haberman, who was the guy that owned it, uh, along with LMT, who was a sysop on Encyclopedia Dramatica, and a few other people like um, Jordan Haas and H Bomber guy were kind of like the originators of Medicare. Um, and I know that Jordan Haberman and uh, H Bomber guy uh, were all from SA, right? So they created a forum where they wanted to try to do essentially uh, let's plays or a retsu praise, right? There, I, I think the original idea of uh, Medicare for Haberman was they wanted to do retsu praise of non video game content, right? That was his, that was his hook. Um, and I watched some of their stuff and it was funny because they were talking about like, you know, furries and all this other weird stuff. And that was kind of what I was into laughing about. So that's kind of how I got into that. Um, but that would have been, man, I don't even remember. That's like 2008, 2009, I think, with Medicare. 
Okay, so you already uh, were making content at that point. Uh, yeah, like around that. I mean, like one of the big things that happened with Medicare uh, involved Encyclopedia Dramatica back in the day. So there's a group called the Ed Singers, right? Um, and back in the day, you know, if you wanted to make an article on Encyclopedia Dramatica, you could do it. Nobody was considered like sacrosanct, right? Nobody was protected. That was the whole idea. You could laugh at anything. Yeah. Uh, but this group of people called the Ed Singers were paying money to the um, to the head sysop, to the owner, to Grippo, right? Uh, Sherrod or whatever. Uh, they were paying her money uh, through donations to keep the site going, and in exchange, they couldn't be made fun of. Oh, they had immunity. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And so uh, LMT, who was a sysop, Haberman, and a few other people really hated that. Uh, and so Haberman at the time wrote an article about troll shielding. Uh, they started screwing with these people. It created this big uh, kind of shitstorm uh, between the two groups. Uh, like I, I'd done a couple of videos making fun of them. Um, Haberman ended up getting doxxed through this because she ended up suing him in New York court. Uh, and that's how his information got out there. I don't know how she got it, uh, but she did. And then she filed a lawsuit, a civil suit against him to make him stop making fun of her. Uh, it what? was just really, it really stupid stuff. Yeah, like people sent her horse feed. Horse <laughs> meat? <laughs> horse feed. Horse oh. feed. Oh, horse feed. Yeah, because there's it's like a granary nearby. Yeah, there's a lot of stupid shit that was going on at the time. But she was a heavier set girl. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, but Medica was fun. You know, at its height, when it was kind of doing stuff, there was a lot of funny shit that was kind of going on uh, on the forums. A lot of, a lot of strange people. Uh, they got focused on that were pretty obscure that I don't think would get stumbled on now. But, I mean, Haberman ended up wiping that out probably in 2015, 2014. Yeah, I've never been on the site. I've only been on Something Awful. And Something Awful isn't even very uh, functional nowadays, is it? Or is it even up to? Is it taken down? Did Lotex take it down before he... No, he. Uh, from what I understand, he ended up selling it. So, okay. I mean, he got forced out, you know, because of his personal stuff. And, I mean, obviously he's dead now, but... Rest in peace, um, man. Oh, recipes the but um yeah, enjoy the mango scenes in heaven but um yeah he uh i, I don't know it, it felt like moderation came down really hard i, I don't want to make it political it just feels like it got way over moderated i guess would be the best way to put it and you couldn't you couldn't make fun of it kind of like what happened with ed like i've noticed this is kind of like a trend with a website or a forum uh it pops up it gets really popular people have fun they do goofy shit and then it attracts so many people that within like 10 years it gets just suffocating and you can't do that anymore because all the new people that come on don't want to do that and they think it's uh, too offensive or it's too mean and then it just degrades the quality until people stop using it and it implodes yeah they gotta water it down it's like uh, it's like karate you know karate's full contact and the next thing you know there's a uh, what, what the fuck tri sport everywhere and it's a bunch of like <laughs> dorky pussy kids doing karate yeah they're all hugging each other yeah, yeah. talking about feelings yeah that's about it yeah so I, I read I read somewhere online that the one of the first videos you made, if not the first video, was because someone sent or you sent someone a zip file with a video game in it, and they couldn't figure out how to open it. Uh, yeah. So one of the like I said, uh, kind of back in the early days, I was big into gaming. Um, you know, like watching the content creators that did that kind of stuff, and I was really big into emulation, like you know, I, trying to get stuff to work. Uh, you know, obscure like. Uh, PC Engine games, that kind of shit. So there was a, a sub forum dedicated to like emulation and gaming. Uh, one of the guys on the forum was an idiot um, who couldn't figure out how to get anything to work. He couldn't like emulate N64 games, NES games, any of this. So I, I created a list, a, a very long list, like step by step process of how to walk him through installing it, where to get the ISOs and the ROMs, to get like it's, it's everything to get the stupid thing to work, right? Yeah. And um, he like messaged me back and said, "Oh, I can't, I can't download any of that because my browser doesn't work." And then I tried to, you know, getting information out of him. What do you mean your browser doesn't work? And he's like, well, I don't have Flash. My family won't let me download Flash, which how the that has nothing to do with downloading zip files. But yeah, it was a clusterfuck of trying to walk this guy through uh, installing an emulator and getting it running uh, in a massive waste of time. But yeah, that was that was probably one of the earliest videos. The, the guy had zero troubleshooting skills. Yeah, he was he was completely uh, <laughs> completely retarded. Yeah, he couldn't he couldn't get the thing to work uh, to save his life. He couldn't handle it, and Dad wouldn't let him uh, download Flash, so it all came crashing down. Uh, apparently not. I, I'm guessing this is a family computer, so he has to get permission on what he installs or downloads. Yeah, it was a, it was just a nightmare trying to get that to work because he wanted to play. I don't even know what he wanted. I can't even remember what the hell he wanted to play, but yeah, it just was not happening. That's awesome. So, is the first YouTube account you you were uploading under is that Jim eighty one Jim or um, 
I read somewhere. What the hell is Games Good Me Bad? Was that was that a channel? Yeah, yeah, the Games Good Me Bad one. Um, yeah, so that was the. Uh... God, I, I had like hundreds of accounts. I just uh, with different names, like uh, hundreds? one of the th- hundreds. Yeah, yeah. So damn. Uh, I try to give you like an example of why. Um, let me think of what a good example of this would be. Uh, so okay, so I made one account. I think it was Midlife Jam. I can't remember the name of the account. Uh, where it was basically a video making fun of uh, the commentary community on YouTube. Right. What I used to do is I, I'd make a I'd make an account. And I'd set up a fake persona, and then I'd make bait videos, and I'd let it sit for like three years, because eventually a group would come across it and try to like get an easy kill on it. Um, so this one was just shitting on the commentary community, and what ended up happening was like two years later, like thirteen of these guys all started making really obnoxious uh, videos about it, you know, uh, about how I didn't understand how great YouTube commentary videos were, and how it was art, and shit like that. But you they all had really it, high. Yeah, they had high-pitched, nasally voices, and they're very autistic. Um, and so I, I just I, I shit all over them. And the funny thing is, I, I did that a second time. So after I, I made fun of all these people and they felt like idiots, I made another account called Wolf Tiger Fox Lover, where I used <laughs> I used the picture of an obese man who was a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, and um, I did the same thing. And the same group of people came by. It was just a repeat. It's really strange that that happened twice in a row. But uh, that was kind of the shit that I like to do. <laughs> so I had I had YouTube accounts all over the place just doing shit like that. Which is literally setting bait for somebody to uh, like respond to it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes if you let it sit there for, I mean, it, it could be years, but eventually you'll, you'll get some kind of response that's funny. Uh, especially if you tailor it to a certain group, yeah. Is this is this back in the days of YouTube where you like a video reply would appear under the video? No, this would have been right after that. That the video reply thing was pretty fun, but um, like Cam Girls basically butchered it. Like it, it went from being able to put up a video reply that was listed right under the video to having three hundred different women with their tits out um, just trying to get like uh, five stars on their videos. Right. And, uh, it just destroyed the whole system. Yeah. It seems to be a, a reoccurring trend in a lot of social media apps. Yeah. Yeah. I, that pretty much sunk it. Um, that, or people would intentionally troll other videos by uh, what they do is they'd make a video response. that was only a second long, uh, but they would make it, uh, cause you couldn't pick your thumbnail back then, but if it was a certain length, you could figure out what the thumbnail would be. Uh, so they time it just right to have like tits or dick show up. Yeah. So, Pop up right under like a really big channel's video, uh, which was pretty entertaining. Just a ball sack. Yeah, just ball sacks under somebody's video. Yeah. So <laughs> that's crazy. You had fucking hundreds of. There's probably some really hilarious stories that are just lost into the. Uh, in, in yeah. The why? Well, yeah, and the thing too is back in the early days of YouTube and stuff like that is, um, like you have to go through hoops now, right? You need phone numbers and ID checks to set up accounts. Back then, you didn't need any of that. You just make what as many accounts as you wanted to. Yeah, soon you're going to have to go to the local precinct and uh, get fingerprints done to make a Twitter account. Uh, essentially, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's probably what's going to happen. But, um, yeah, like early internet or early YouTube stuff was uh, entertaining. Uh, there was a whole, have you ever heard of somebody called Kenjopi? No. Uh, in fact, a lot of the people you've listed uh, thus far I have not heard of. Okay, so there was this guy named Kenjopi. I, I can't remember what he, why he started his you know internet jihad. But he found a way um, to work YouTube's report system for DMCA's. He found a glitch where he could basically file off thousands of DMCA's in like minutes. What? Um, so he used it to go. He created a trolling account where he'd basically go to somebody's channel and be like, "You're next," and then he'd take them down. <laughs> and, it, he, and he started doing this to just everybody, and it made people go insane, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think the biggest account he went after at the time was like the Nintendo Capri Sun, who was like at a hundred thousand subs at the time. It was like this big deal. Um, but the, the funny offshoot of that was a bunch of these, like, you know, uh, gaming YouTubers made their own website. This guy named Helsing, right? Made his own website called Winger Dingers, where, where they post their own content. So people started making trolling accounts based off Kenjopi and leaving comments saying, we're coming for you, Winger Dingers, and made them paranoid as fuck. <laughs> so it was so dumb. Yeah. Jesus, man. That guy was like the fucking uh, hand of God able to delete anything on the platform. Yeah, I'm not sure what what the exploit was that he found, but um, back in the day, you could find just people screaming on the Google support forums about this guy, um, and YouTubers just having breakdowns because he just he it didn't matter. He he hit a channel with ten subs or a million subs, and nothing stopped it. And it was just they were completely uh, 
baseless DMCA's, but he found it was some loophole that he could just fire them off as many as he wanted. It still is bullshit. You can still get someone's fucking channel like permanently or uh, temporarily like locked by filing false DMCA's. It's really annoying. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like the exploits in the system. I remember once. Um, this must have been like six or seven years ago. Um, because I remember people did this to the Young Turks YouTube channel when it was live. Uh, there was like some code you could put in the comments where it would make it stream across like an annotation on the screen, even if it wasn't your YouTube channel. So when the Young Turks were streaming, people were putting up horrendous things on their stream using this exploit in the comment section. Really? Uh, that last, yeah, that lasted for about two days before YouTube figured out they screwed up. Dude, shout out, uh, a huge shout out to Chank Uyghur. If you guys don't know him, he creates some really rad content. Right. Oh yeah, great, great stuff. Yeah. yeah, I love that guy. He's awesome. Shout out to his. Uh, what is it? Is it his cousin Hassan? Is yeah, I think cousin? it's his. Uh, it's like his nephew. nephew. Yeah. 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 Those, those guys are awesome. Right. <clears throat> oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah. That's where I go for any uh, any hot tips on uh, horse husbandry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want an unbiased take? I, I have Anna Kasparian tell me, whisper it into my ear at night. Oh, nothing like Anna whispering. Yeah, she's got such a serene voice. My sweetie. So, would you say would you say that Spax Three would be like the first uh, guy you really went after? Or one yeah, that uh, yeah, I, I'd say that's fair because uh, that was again kind of an outgrowth of the um, the gaming interest back in the day. Because uh, he set up his own website. Um, yeah, what was it called? Spax's Game Tune Zone. <laughs> Yeah, Spax 3's Game Tune Zone. Yep, and it was a banner of him with, like, Mega Man and Sonic holding hands. Um, and he made, like, 800 videos just seething about uh, voice actors for Sonic. And I think it was Jason Griffith, who he just couldn't stand. He's not good enough. Uh, not good enough. Just not representing Sonic how Sonic needed to be represented. Uh, but, yeah, that was that was his thing. He, he, did, uh, <laughs> he did a ton of that. And uh, I guess what what was it like when when you first dropped that spe first Spax three video because you dropped uh, several parts right? Yeah, yeah, I did a ton. Uh, that in part was I think at the time YouTube only let you did uh, they had like a time limit uh, back in the day like ten minutes, so you used to have to segment your stuff. It went it was really weird. They used to let you upload videos of any length for a while, and then it was like they can only be ten minutes long, and then they stopped doing that and let you do whatever length you want. Uh, but yeah, there there was multi part. It was a, it was a lot. I shit on I shit on Spax for a while. Yeah, was that guy like freaking out upon seeing the first uh, batch of videos? Yeah, he got angry um, because I you know I ended up talking to people that talked to him. I mean, it's the same kind of people that I talked to that knew uh, back in the day. Uh, Chibi uh, Necodemics. Uh, that's a guy that. Uh... <laughs> that's the guy that embarrassed himself at the speedrunning event where they're like, "Can you please shut up." The same guy that uh, cheated on a, a speed run and um, had trolls call his house about him trying to hook up with underage girls. So, you know, like, it, it, it's weird. Uh, you run across these people, like, ten years ago, and then you come across them again, and you're like, holy shit, nothing's changed. Well, they're still fucking up and being weirdos? They're still fucking up and being... Yeah, because, like, back in the day, he used to wear, like, spiked dog collars and uh, makeup and put his hair in ponytails and shit. It was just very, it, it, like, era, it, it, like, Pippi Longstocking kind of stuff. It was very weird. Good for yeah, good for him. <laughs> That's cool. He's, he's li he was living his best life. Yeah, I like that shit. That's good. Um, so the spack shit happened. What what else was notable in the Jim eighty one Jim era? If you were like to recap, I mean, that? it it kind of bleeds together. It, it, it's like the Jim eighty one Jim stuff and the the games good me bad stuff uh, was mostly kind of <laughs> mostly making fun of uh, like uh, YouTube commentary stuff and making fun of um, uh, spacks. Or uh, Juggalos. Uh, there were a lot of Juggalos for some reason back then. Woo-woo, uh, you know what I'm saying? Woo-woo, indeed. Uh, but uh, that was that was pretty much it. I mean, that kind of transitioned into Medicare where it was more uh, forum-based uh, stuff where we would screw, screw around with different groups. So uh, all these years later, uh, you know, because it is the current year, 2022, mm -hmm. what's your stance on, you know, Violent J and the Juggalos, the homies? Oh, well, much motherfucking wicked clown love. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm always I'm always down with the clown, yeah. the, uh, the hatchet. Yeah, there you go. Jim, we're a family, okay? Yeah, we are fam. There you go. I need you to know that. Now, I, I went to the gathering of the Juggalos this past year, and uh, it was fun. I'll give it to him. It was a fun time. Yeah, I saw a bit of a clip of it on your main channel when you asked the guy to put his mask on, and he said, "Fuck off." Yeah, no, <laughs> the Juggalos are uh, they're a funny bunch. Um, let's see. So. After Jim 81 Jim, you were doing anime facts and prank calls 
a little bit that just were yeah, fun? Yeah. Yeah, the prank call stuff was really fun back in the day. Like, uh, one of the things that kind of sucks about YouTube now is you can't do half of it. Um, or the stuff that you see now is completely fake. Like, you know, back then you could do um, weird, awkward stuff in public. You could do prank videos. You could do, you know, uh, phone calls, that kind of stuff. It, it was kind of just allowed, right? Yeah. Um, but, but now it's everything's against term of service. And so, like, if you enter prank phone calls... You might find some of the old, uh, you know, uh, ventrilo harassment stuff, maybe. Uh, but most of it's just, it's it's fake stuff. Like, you know, like radio almost. It's just not, it's not even real. Uh, but yeah, back then you could do phone pranks. And uh, that was that was pretty fun. Well, are, are you a fan of like... Um... I mean, we used to we used to call hookers. We used to call hookers and uh, f- and then get in arguments with their pimps. Oh, that's all. Like call them to a hotel and then... <laughs> create a whole fucking problem no we, we'd call hookers we'd call hookers and then demand free service and when they when they said they don't do it for free we'd be like your your pimp gave us coupons <laughs> they get their pimp on it it'd just be a screaming match it's shit like that that's great no I, I love uh prank calls are you familiar with longmont potion castle uh no i don't think so oh he's like a notorious prank caller from somewhere in the california area he's been anonymous for like 20 years but he's so fucking funny holy shit yeah, some of the prank stuff is great, um, but I mean that's the uh, you know that stuff that's kind of I, I, where would we even go to watch it? You know what I mean? To find like really good stuff. Like if somebody tried live streaming that, they'd probably get knocked out. Like even the um, uh, the videos where people were go after uh, scammers now. Yeah. Like, you ever see that? Like the tech support ones where they go after like the scamming call centers in like India and stuff. Yeah, kid like a lot, kid boga or something. One of them. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of those channels. It, like I, I've seen some of them get messed with, and I'm like, well, it, this is really funny stuff. It's entertaining, but like even that, I don't think it's going to be around for that long because they'll be like, oh, it's against terms of service. Oh, TOS is the best. No, I, one of my YouTuber friends, I think his name's uh, Reckless Ben. I don't think his name. I mean, that is his name. I think he was exposing like a multi-level marketing scheme of some sort, and <laughs> YouTube like deleted the video or age restricted the video or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Uh, and so half stupid. the stuff. Uh, yeah, with the call center stuff, or even with the prank phone call stuff, half of it was just humor. You know what I mean? It wasn't like super malicious stuff. Yeah. Uh, but even that, they won't let fly anymore. What about like the Jerky Boys? Do you know who they are? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was. Uh, but I mean, I think most people are familiar with that. That was going around on CDs, just like uh, Adam Sandler's uh, first comedy CD. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Again, you're talking about you're talking about like really old stuff. Yeah. Yeah, old school. So, but now we're on to the uh, Internet Aristocrat era. Sure. Was there a big gap between making the Gym 81 Gym stuff and the Internet Aristocrat era? Like, did you take time off the Internet? or? No, uh, the Internet Aristocrat channel was set up based off the Gottfried uh, telling of the Aristocrat joke, uh, where the video would start with uh, Gilbert Gottfried and end with him saying the Aristocrats. But uh, that channel was, you know, that the main purpose of that was to do those E.D. Singer videos. So when I'm talking about, like, you know, hey, we've been having, like, this war with Ed Sysops and stuff and the ED Singers, like, we used as a forum that channel to make fun of them. Okay. So that's why that's, like, the start of the Internet Aristocrat, because at the time it was just another, you know, one of countless others. And w- when did it transition to become your main one, or why? Uh, I'd say kind of after Haberman, uh, like, after Medicare kind of stuff. Like, he, he and Jordan Haas had a falling out, and... um the forum just kind of petered out at that point. So I, you know, I was like, well, I might as well use the channel for something, you know, cause I put some videos up on it. So I started doing uh, videos on like Tumblr. Yeah. Right? Tumblr like isms. I, yeah. I, mm-hmm. That's mainly what I use the channel for. So what, yeah. What year did Medicare.org fucking go under? I, I mean, I'd say like 2013, 2014. Um, like Haberman was really, like thorough in removing traces of it from the internet. If you go on Wayback Machine or Archive, um, he personally wrote them to make them take down all records. Hmm. And then he put up a long Tumblr post uh, talking about how he was he was gay now, and um, uh, because of that, I guess he felt bad about trolling. I, I never understood what the whole point. It didn't make sense to me. Why can't gay um, people troll? That seems homophobic. <laughs> right. I, it's very weird. None of us would have cared. But uh, like he, he, he was like, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm a gay man. <laughs> I'm going to delete all my trolling stuff. And uh, he, so he, he wiped it all from the face of the earth, which sucks because, you know, like the school shooter thing was up there from 2012. You know, a lot of a the really video crazy game. stuff. Yeah, yeah. That was the video game we, we were going to make. Uh, uh, school shooter North American Tour 2012. Um, that ended up, it was just a mod, but it got a lot of attention. Uh, even got cited in a Supreme Court case. 
um, big time gym, a, a big time Medicare at the time because yeah. it was, um, oh shit, I can't remember what member it was. It was doing all the modding uh, in source, but uh, they worked on that a lot. Yeah, but just stuff like that got wiped out. And it kind of sucks because it was funny watching the thread progression of it go from the idea to like seeing it kind of take form. So the video game was during like kind of the gym eighty one gym various account days. I'd say it was at, kind of like at the tail end of that. I mean, it was kind of like around the games could be bad, uh, Internet Aristocrat. Again, like these are all accounts that just kind of simultaneously existed. It was mostly just kind of making an account and then leaving it there to see if you'd do something with it. Or you'd forget a password, you just make a new one, and then you remember it and go back and use it. Um, again, it's very different than it is today. Now, if you want a YouTube channel, you need your phone number and a Google account, and everything has to be linked. Back then, it was literally it took you three seconds, you make an account, and you're done. Yeah, and back then, what? when did monetization even come into the, the fold? Uh, that wasn't for a while. I mean, you had people like um, AVGN or people like that guy with the glasses that had to find their own way to monetize because they weren't actually monetizing. And I think they did that through Blip TV. Um, if I remember, like, that guy with the glasses kept getting copyright strikes for his, like, five-second review. So he went to Blip TV, and then he started doing advertisements. Um, and then AVGN did as well. But, like, I think, like, the big money-making stuff wasn't until, like, 2011 2012 you know with with like ads like the super chat stuff and all of that stuff um that's more recent and was that ever like in your mind was that did a light bulb ever go off like well i can make a lot of money from this or it was all strictly you know i'm no. gonna keep going to school and get my job and do my own thing and then just privately on the side for fun i'm gonna do the internet shit no no i wasn't uh setting out to do anything with it um i mean even when i was doing like um like the tumblers and stuff i think was like 2013 to 2014 right when i was when i was doing that stuff um i can't remember if they had ad revenue at the time no they did they would have had ad revenue at the time but i mean i was mostly making those videos because i wanted to laugh at stuff and you know they did fairly well for the size of the channel you know what i mean um i think it was maybe like 50,000 subs uh before gamergate and you know the videos would get between 25 and 100,000 views and mostly because people didn't believe the tumblr was that crazy yeah, no, the Tumblrism series is fucking hilarious. I love that shit. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. It was a really goofy website. So, uh, the Tumblrisms, is that the, the the first shit you did that really caught some traction? Or I guess the SPAC series did pretty well. Well, I mean, SPAC, yeah, it, uh, maybe subjectively. I mean, SPACs was, again, it was mostly just kind of me laughing about it with people that I knew. Um, but I'd say, like, the Tumblrisms things did well because there were you know people outside of the group that i would usually associate with that were watching it yeah. um and again i, I kind of chalk that down to just tumblr was really crazy at the time right and so it was kind of it was new like everybody talks about that kind of stuff now you know uh, like privilege and you know uh, uh, health at any size you know all these like you know catch words and buzz words and all that stuff and but privilege. like yeah but at the time it was it was fairly new so it was really weird yeah yeah, it is pretty crazy to see how everything has transpired back from like the 2010 to now um, with the terms of service and the buzzwords and, you know, complaints and whatnot. Yeah, well, I mean, it gained momentum. It went from like a weird little like niche thing of uh, people that were like hypersensitive. And to like then, mainstream now. Yeah, because I think that they all grew up with it as teenagers going through high school and then through college. And then when they went into the workforce, they got jobs at HR departments or in tech companies, and they took that mindset with them and then influenced, you know, terms of service. So their blog posts and their diaries from when they're teenagers became the stuff that, you know, the rules that we have to abide by now on different websites. It's awesome. Uh, I really That's great. Love it. Yeah. yeah, we all love it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, the Hugbox Chronicles, that's something I'm, I'm less familiar with. I, I've watched probably every one of the Tumblrisms, I would think, but the Hugbox Chronicles, what exactly is that? So it's mostly just based on events that were happening. Um, I, I thought it was a catchy name. <laughs> it was really what it was. But um, so if something happened, uh, like a little miniature event on the Internet, it, it would just kind of try to uh, give a basic summary of what happened and who was involved. Um, you know, I think uh, one of the videos was a YouTuber named Jello Apocalypse. Got a bunch of shit from somebody because they weren't being uh, woke enough. Uh, at the time, nobody used the term woke, but they weren't being woke enough. Um, uh other stuff like that. I, I, again, I mean, they all kind of follow the same formula. It's really strange groups of people or strange communities doing uh, weird shit, right? And then uh, kind of the enjoyment of watching how weird it is 
when somebody tries to convince you that they have the spirit of a deer living in them <laughs> or that you know <laughs> or that them being 780 pounds is just as healthy as the guy that's 180 you know what i mean so I mean, that's just a fact that's, really yeah those are facts that's science it's undisputed yeah. um so what, what's one of your favorite tumblrism episodes and what comes to mind oh uh, when it comes to like Tumblr, the thing that I enjoyed the most, just like oh, one of the episodes you made. I mean, I have to think about it. I, I, I think probably the first one, which would, would have been, I think it was the thin privilege one. Um, because it was, it was mostly just, I mean, at the end of the day, it was mostly just fat chicks yelling about their doctors, telling them they were fat, right. And how they couldn't cope with that. And it was such a stupid fucking thing. But they, they would spin it out into being a larger issue, right? So it'd be some chick who was like 600 pounds, goes to her doctor, and her doctor's like, wow, you are fat. You don't want to get diabetes or have a heart attack. And then she'd be like, well, that's your, 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 you're trying to terrorize me. This is, this is thin terrorism and yeah, shit now, like that. Now it's a societal issue, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah. I mean, at, at least in America, it's like, what, 45% obesity here? Yeah, no, it's I love bad. It. No, I love yeah. how a, a girl, you know, you gain too much weight and then the doctor tells you that it's unhealthy and you throw a fit and it's like, I'm being, uh, you know, society's taking advantage of me and mistreating me. Unless, like, the doctor's super clever and he's like, this is the only exercise she's going to get if I make her spaz up by telling her how fat she is. <laughs> we got to get her heart rate up. We got we to gotta get some exercise going, yeah. No, that is, a, the, that is a pretty funny one, thin privilege. And then the Hugbox Chronicles, that's, you know, I guess just more current events. Was there anything from that that sticks out to you? Uh, I mean, I think Ross was a part of that, wasn't he? I, I, like, I don't have like my entire library, uh, like of Memorize. what each thing was was called, uh, but I'm pretty sure that Ross and the whole bathtub saga stuff was part of like the Hugbox Chronicles. So that was Internet Aristocrat days. Uh, that would have been no, that would have been post Internet Aristocrat. That would have been Medicare Internet Insanity. Med yeah, uh, Medicare. Because I mean, I still did uh, Hugbox stuff, and I still did uh, even like a Tumblrism after I moved over to the Medicare thing. So Gamergate was kind of the uh, the farewell to the Internet Aristocrat channel? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I was doing the Tumblrism and videos. They were doing fine. I was having fun doing them. Uh, the Zoe Quinn stuff happened. Uh, I did a video about that. And then um, this, the Gamergate thing uh, grew into its own thing. And I was like, I, I'm, I, I'm checking out. I'm, I'm grabbing my parachute and jumping. Uh, and then I, I wiped the accounts. And then just, you know, like I think six months or a year later, I uh, started up the Medicare account and then started doing videos on that. So yeah, Gamergate was like a huge fucking deal. If you were to give like the elevator pitch of what Gamergate was, what would you say in your own words? I was getting women out of gaming. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it, it, listen, for like three or four years, right, you couldn't go on to a video game website or, or a video game review site and just read. Like, I wanted a newswire. I know this sounds stupid, but I think a lot of people did. Where, like, I just want to hear about video game news. Like, just just tell me the name of the title that's coming out. Give me a straightforward review, right? Just give me basic information. Yeah. But they took that approach of just giving you basic information. And then they started preaching to you. And it started out really subtly at first. But then, like, as it went on, more and more and more, it became, you're terrible. Gamers are horrible. If you play video games, you're shit. And it was like every outlet was doing this. And then they all became, like, incestuous with, with each other. And they were all super friendly with each other. And then here comes Zoe Quinn, who has this shitty game, and I, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, all the stuff comes out from her ex, and it turns out that she knows all these different game reviewers who are kissing her ass, and it looks like this just shitty incestuous thing, and I think people were just at the point had enough of it. They're like, I'm sick of going to like a, a, a gaming website and being told I'm a piece of shit because I play video games when all these people are just incestuous idiots that are trying to like boost their career and don't mean any of it. So, I mean, that would be, like, the opening pitch to it. And, you know, at the start of it, it was mostly just people fucking uh, kind of making fun of them and pushing back on that. Um, but then it grew into, like, this multi-headed hydra of, uh, you know, activism. And, I, you know, I, I pulled the cord pretty quick on that. I think I was in it for, like, three months. You just bailed? I just bailed. And did you <laughs> was, there, was there a hiatus there between that ending and Medicare starting? Uh, yeah, I'd say like six months, maybe a year. And you were just uh, chilling, living a regular life? Yeah, just uh, living a regular life and um, <laughs> laughing at shit on my own, basically, yeah. Oh, so you weren't off the internet, you're just not publicly making shit at that point? 
no, no, I just shut down the accounts. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. You guys do whatever you're gonna do. I, this is getting stupid. And what sparked the, uh, the uh, rising of the from the ashes of Internet Aristocrat? I just felt like doing videos again. Uh, and the other thing too was uh, Haberman, like I said, wiped out everything, and so I thought it was funny because he was so desperate. Like it was very weird. So he was so desperate to make the word Medicare disappear that it would never appear on the internet again. So I thought, well, I'll just make a YouTube channel and call it Medicare, um, so he can never get rid of that. And then I get to tell this fascinating story about who Haberman is every time somebody says, "What is what does Medicare mean?" Yeah, to I, kind I, of undo his undo his work to make it disappear. Yeah, Haberman. Happy to have you on the show, Haberman. <laughs> I hope this gets back to you, Buster. I, I wonder if you're like the bane of that guy's existence. If he just like absolutely hates you, or if he tried, if you are void in his mind at this point. Oh no, I think he's moved on. I, you know, and if it was old Haberman, he would have laughed and thought that was a funny idea. But uh, I, I don't know what he's doing. Um, but I think he's probably moved on with his life and uh, whatever it is, it is. I haven't, I haven't really talked to him or touched base with him in like six years. So I, I, I mean, he could be dead for all I know. Yeah, so I was actually thinking about that. Uh, you know, if you're anonymous on the internet and you die, like who, who's going to be there to let the masses know that you're gone? Well, I don't know if there's really a need to, but um, I mean, if, if Haberman kicked the bucket, I, I, I don't know who would inform me. Um, I mean, I know who he is. Like I said, he got he got doxxed because of the lawsuit. So I, I suppose it'd be a way to look it up. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm fairly certain he just kind of was like, I'm just done with the Internet stuff. And he's off doing whatever it is he's doing. Yeah, living the gay lifestyle. It's good. <laughs> living the gay lifestyle, yeah. All right, so now we're on to Mr. Medicare, the big time, big time Jim's your your crowning moment, right? Oh, the crowning moment, sure. Yeah, yeah the shining diamond of your existence, <laughs> Mr. Medicare, the YouTube channel. Isn't the internet fun, Jim? Oh, it's great. It's, it's a it's a good time, or it was. Oh uh, yeah, I guess it it is fizzling out a bit, but still, it is fun, mm -hmm. and we've had a lot of great times. <laughs> oh, you're on the internet. So, internet insanity is that one of the first things you post on the Medicare thing like what, what started like all right you know what I, I have some juicy shit I need to fucking talk uh, about the first the first video I did was Hall at Halls which was just one episode uh, and that was about uh, the dental department at a college in Canada I think uh, where it was a group of uh, dentists who were going through the program and they had their own private uh, like chat group where they'd make jokes and somebody found out about the chat group and tried to get everybody expelled and have their lives ruined because of it so it wasn't guys going on like the school Facebook page and saying obnoxious shit. It wasn't dudes that were saying nasty stuff in class or going after people. It was literally a group of people in a private chat talking about stuff that got, you know, out there. And then, you know, these people wanted them expelled and talked about how dangerous they were. And I thought it was just insane. And so, yeah, they I guess they uh, implemented the life ruination tactics that you uh, love so dearly. Yeah, those are always super fun. But, uh, yeah, it was activists at their school that wanted them, uh, you know, expelled. And uh, it, it was just very weird. They didn't break any rules. They were academically fine. They paid their bills. Um, but they wanted them uh, thrown off campus uh, because of things they said in private. And I thought that was stupid. Yeah, that seems ridiculous. And, yeah, right? It's nuts. And this is a channel you're building from the ground up. It's zero subscribers. You post that video. Are people recognizing, like, oh, that's the Internet Aristocrat? Does it start getting attention immediately? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, people picked up on it pretty quick. Um, I can't remember her, like, I can't remember exactly how well that particular video did, but, um, you know, I, it was mostly once I did that, I kind of started jumping back into what I'd done previously. I felt enough time had passed and that I could, I could walk around the Gamergate spurgery <laughs> to, to be able to just do my, you know, uh, make fun of Tumblr again, kind of thing. Get back to doing what you love, right? Get, get down to basics, yeah. So one of my favorite things that you've ever done is the Jonathan Ross shit, just because I think that's so fucking incredible how you can go from, you know, you're perusing the internet, you stumble upon a live stream with 10 to 20 people, you start watching and just miraculously you stumble upon like a gold mine of, uh, I guess, freaky pedophile weirdos that the internet, you know, no one knows that, about. Yeah, that story was had so many twists and turns, right? So it starts off with just, uh, John, uh, it starts off with Ross getting yelled at by, not even yelled at, but getting getting chastised by a, you know, a group of people he's in a call with. Um, and from there, it expands into him saying all this weird stuff about kids, wanting to be a teacher, but who wants to hurt kids, you know, like really shit that he shouldn't be saying. He said he wanted, um, he said he wanted to bathe kids or something? 
uh, he yeah he said he liked to collect pictures of preteens in the bathtub but he also made like really rage like rage filled statements about wanting to hurt kids too that were in there who would think that's acceptable right it's insane it's absolutely insane and then he had this girl that was defending him but it turns out she's into like this kink community of littles where she likes to role play as a little kid so you know you've got him talking about bathtub pics of five-year-olds and her wanting to be a five-year-old then you've got this group of people saying that he's doing all this other shit so i start doing videos on that and then He's like Red Dead Bandito. He starts talking about super hackers are going to come to get me that he's friends with. And uh, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But the you know, like the weird twist on that is it turns out one of the guys that was really anti Ross and wanted to see him go to jail for this ends up um, getting convicted and put in prison for like 60 years. Uh, for, for I think he raped his little sister. Holy so shit. It's crazy. So this guy had a YouTube channel dedicated to, you know, going after Ross and saying what, you know, he was a pedophile and doing all this stuff. And then it comes out, he got arrested and then went to trial and convicted for raping his sister. Damn. So he was like, a, it was a he who smelt it dealt it kind of a situation. Yeah, it was one of those like, you know, big projection things, right? Like that was, I guess, his reason for going hard after Ross was I, like guilt or trying to cover it up. I, I don't know. But um, yeah, so like that's wild, right? Like you'd expect it to be Ross. It was going to be the one going to prison with all the stuff he said. And then it turns out to be the other guy who was after Ross. My God. Yeah, they're both smelling it and dealing it, but only uh, the other guy got in trouble. So Jonathan Ross never got jail time. Uh, I, from what I understand, he got put into like a, I don't know what it, what it'd be exactly, like a home, a reform house. Um, we got him the help he, he needed, right? He got put in some kind of an institutionalized program for a while there. Um, and, you know, it, part of it was just like his lifestyle habits because – I, you know, thinking back, I'm trying not to misremember this, but like this was a dude that wouldn't shower and would shit himself, and like ha you could hear his grandma yelling at him in the background that he smelled like poop and needed to bathe. Like he would get into these rage fits where he'd scream. The cops were always coming over. He's always talking about little kids. So I think eventually the state stepped in and they're like, "We got to do something with this guy," and they put him in some kind of halfway house program for a while. Uh, where he is now, I don't know, but he went to something for a while. Sounds like the best uh, babysitter of all time, covered in yeah, shit that... and trying to put you in the bathtub. <laughs> but he won't go in the tub, just you in the tub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty awful. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like uh, somebody in your chat said, uh, like Nick Bates. I mean, that's it, pretty similar kind of thing. And Nick Bates is also somebody um, I did a video on back in the day. Um, he got convicted of molesting his sister and went to prison as well. And um, he was like a fecophiliac, so he was into eating poop and all of this stuff. And I think he tried to, like, do that to her. It's just really what, horrible. What, tried to eat his sister's shit? Try to make her play with poop. Okay. You know, really horrific stuff. Like, this little girl is, like, I think nine or eight at the time. Oh. But the thing with that dude was he talked about it on the internet for, like, four or five years. Talked about wanting to do it. Talked about doing it. And nobody, nobody like, believed it for a long time. Um, I can't remember what it was eventually that switched. But she went to, like, her parents one day and said, he's been doing this stuff to me. Can you make him stop? And then the police got involved and like this guy was like a horror story. Like his teeth were all rotted out yeah. and he, he tried to convince the prosecutor that he couldn't be guilty of molesting his sister by sending the prosecutor a video of him masturbating with poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, that's, that's uh, one of those uh, internet stories, man, you know, and I don't know, I like the thought process behind it. I'm not sure, but that's, that was his brilliant legal defense. My God, imagine how bewildered you'd fucking be as the, uh, you're in court and you're like, what the fuck is this piece of evidence? Oh, and you know, and I remember too, because the video was accessible. There's oh, you a could copy watch of it. it. Oh, yeah, you could watch him jerking off with shit. And for a long time, I was trying to think, how can I put this in my YouTube video <laughs> and, and not have my channel immediately? Like, uh, you know, because I was like, could I maybe sneak this in if I censored it a little bit? But yeah, that's not, it's not gonna, <laughs> not gonna make it in. That's great. In the mind of Medicare, you're like, we gotta incorporate this we got to find a way to put this in. Yeah, yes. people need to see this. Shit masturbation. Um, so, yeah, th those two ones are obviously huge, the Jonathan Ross, Nick Bates. And I feel like, I mean, you're somewhat instrumental in, in that coming to light, right? I mean, you're putting a magnifying glass on it. Uh, well, no, not with Nick Bates, because that, that was the, the, the girl herself that went to, um, like, her dad or her mom or the police. I, I, I started covering it right as that was happening, I think. Okay. Um, you know, because, uh, like I said, he'd sent the tape in to the prosecutor. So that was kind of like, okay, holy shit, this is crazy as a story. Um, the, the Ross thing was just something that kind of became its own little saga um, in, of, in and of itself. But, I mean, I can't, I, again, 
I thought it would be Ross going to prison, not some guy associated with trying to go after Ross. And then, um, like, that was completely out of left field. And I think, again, the same thing happened. It was the girl went to her parents and was like, he's doing this. And then they got the police involved. So did you feel like, do you feel like you making the videos had some kind of an impact on that coming to light at all or not really with the Jonathan Ross thing? No, I mean, if it had been Ross that went to prison, if they were like, oh, we fought all this uh, hardcore CP or all these kids he molested, then, yeah, I would have felt like I played somewhat of a part in that. But uh, as far as this other guy goes, I, like, I, I I, had nothing to do with that. I didn't know he was doing any of that stuff. I don't. Th- I mean, nobody did. That's kind of why it came out, and everybody was kind of shocked. Yeah, it is crazy, though. But maybe, maybe in some way you exposing Jonathan Ross like stopped him from doing some shit to some child. Uh, well, I mean, that would be nice to think, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I do think Ross is, uh, you know, dangerous in that in that way. I really do. Um, I don't think it's all just bullshit talk on his part. Um, I think he's a dude with rage issues, and I think he's a dude that probably uh, shouldn't be around kids. And, like, his wanting to be, like, a teacher's assistant is insane when you say the stuff that he says online. Yeah, I don't know how he could think that's conducive. Yeah. Let me, uh, yeah, that's just crazy. And then was, I guess, the, the furry thing, I, I, I don't have it exactly straight in my head, but... Wasn't it one of the Internet Insanity furry episodes when you went down the rabbit hole of them, like, mutilating animals? Um, so with that one, you're talking about, like, uh, the zoo file stuff, yeah, right? Like, uh, yeah. With um, Carol the Wolf, I think it is. Um, so with that stuff, uh, I actually got sent on Twitter from uh, a former, I think it was Odd Guy, I think it was... A guy was a former sysop on ad link me to something he's like have you seen these uh, telegram leaks um and that's how i stumbled on that um and like the cure of the wolf stuff and like the people involved in that were crazy like that was a, a, again that was like really if i had to rank it you know uh, on vileness like i mean ross would be at the bottom because again it was another guy that went to prison not ross and then you'd have like nick bates who did terrible stuff and then you'd have like the zoo file stuff where they're talking about like torturing and raping animals and molesting children like those logs were awful because like I mean, they were openly talking about molesting little kids and how they got away with it jesus christ that's dark yeah and, and one of them did i i believe get arrested and go to jail i think it was snake thing the one that was talking about molesting his like five-year-old nephew Ugh. and how he, how he got away with it um so i believe the police did investigate him and did put him in prison um, but the other ones uh, were able to kind of weasel their way out of it, you know, saying that Iranian hackers went into their telegram or whatever it was. And posted all the nasty stuff. Right, yeah, they were they were hacked by the Iranians was the excuse at the time. Those damn Iranians always posting. Uh, my fucking I, I know, right? That's, uh, they're, all, they're always getting you. How do people like that find each other? How do you find a fucking community of people that want to rip apart and rape animals? I mean, how do you, do you just casually throw that out one day? I think what it is is it's like a... Um, it's almost like dipping your toe in the pool, right? So I, I, it's like a progression of social media that goes into private media. So you take something like a website like, I don't know, like DeviantArt, right? Which is, you know, kind of a split between like just artists and then fetish stuff. Um, and so somebody signs up for that website and, you know, what happens? Um, they, they start getting interested in the furry stuff. They start talking to people that are doing the furry stuff. And they're like, hey, you should, you should come to this other website that's uh, more, more specific to this you know, for affinity or whatever, right? And so they kept, you know, they keep getting led down that rabbit hole, right? Where they get more and more isolated from the, the general populace and more and more specifically into that uh, subculture until they find themselves on a very specific, you know, Telegram or Discord or whatever, where they're only talking to 10 other people and they're all talking about this really heinous shit. Yeah, that's, that, I, I guess just a slippery slope you start to go down. Next thing you know, you're watching like squirrels get flayed and came on or something. Yeah, but I, I think more than, like, I, I mean, when you say, like, slippery slope in, in this context, it makes it seem like they were, you know, unsuspecting that that would happen, but I think... That they're, like, searching that, it out. Yeah, they're, they're definitely searching it out, but, I mean, the, their journey to it has to go through, like, the open websites to the more, you know, kind of private web websites to then the specific uh, social media, um, you know, communication platforms. Yeah, that should... Ugh. So, <laughs> then, then after the... Uh, furry shit. What? There's the. Uh, well, I'm, I'm probably not getting this chronologically right, but the the Monday Matt saga. Uh, with Matt and the flagging stuff. Yeah, I mean that was more that was more uh, like Killstream related because that was more directed at like Ralph um, getting flagged off of I think it was YouTube at the time and then having to go stream separately on I believe it was DLive at the time 
I can't even no, it was a separate YouTube channel. Yeah. So he got flagged or his stream went down, started up another stream. Matt ends up coming on and then uh, Zidane gets him to show his flag history. And then you see like the the Monday Matt thing where like he had flagged down a bunch of people that were criticizing him. Um, and he he ate shit for that for like three years, four years. Yeah, the big uh, deal. Got, yeah, he, he got his revenge though in the end, I guess. <laughs> well, with this most this latest stream with Ralph. Yeah, yeah, he ended up chasing Ralph off. So yeah, he got, he got his uh, pound of flesh. I mean, I think they need to have the rubber match, right? I feel like they're one and one right now. You'd think, right? Yeah, I was I was kind of surprised Ralph ran for it. I thought he'd be, you know. I, I don't know because at the end of that stream, I was like, "Well, Matt, if you want to, your audience wants to ask questions, we'll just answer whatever." Because I think it's done. But Ralph was like, "No, no, no, let's all have a talk." And then the second Matt started going in on him, he just he just hauled ass out of there. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a hilarious uh, stream. I don't know what Ralph was thinking by pre gaming with just copious amounts of alcohol. I, it was a mistake. Yeah, I, for two hours he kept uh, bringing up and saying. Um, yeah, come on stream, come on stream, come on stream, over and over and over again. I agreed. I was like, okay, fine. You know, I'll go on Flamenco stream with you. And he's like, no, let's go on this. Uh, let's go on this stream. I was like, well, I, I don't know who these people are. And so finally, he's like, let's go on Matt's stream, which was a, a really weird non sec. You know, it was like out of left field. So I was like, okay, I'm sure if Matt'll do it. And Matt's like, yeah, why not? I think he made like fourteen hundred bucks of just sitting there listening to Ralph and <laughs> Ralph drunkenly scream. Jarbo with the win. Yeah, so he made money, embarrassed Ralph, and then ran him off his uh, his streams. I think, yeah, he got his pound of flesh on that. The, yeah, that, I remember watching the stream, though, whenever uh, Monday Matt was, like, exposed. Because he's trying to lie and keep up the facade that he's not flagging people. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Uh, that when shit was Zidane, gold. Yeah, and then Zidane comes in, basically, and he's like, well, there is a way to check your report history if you do this on YouTube. And then he shows it, and sure enough, it's every video you think it was. Yeah, that shit was, was so gold. And then I guess uh, now it's on to the, the next saga, kind of, after Mr. Medicare, but I guess it's kind of the uh, the cancer saga, right? Oh, yeah, the most fun saga of all, yeah. Yeah, the uh, incredibly enjoyable, happy saga. So when did you first find out you had this uh, illness? Uh, well, I, mean, I got diagnosed with a lymphoma, I'd say about, shit, I mean, it would have been two years now. Um, ended up going in to a dermatologist who uh, took a look at uh, my scalp. I was like, yeah, that's a tumor. Let's do a biopsy. Um, did his biopsy, sent off uh, the test. They stained it. It came back. And then I got to go through the whole wonderful process of uh, PET scans and blood workups and all that shit. And then there's also this um, autoimmune disorder of sorts that's coupled with the lymphoma. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what ended up fucking me. If it had just been the lymphoma, which it's not great on its own, right? B-cell lymphoma, but um, I, I could have dealt with it fairly okay-ish. Um, but uh, as they were doing all their testing and stuff, it was just, um, they kept getting weird results. You know, and it started off with obscure things that didn't really connect into the cancer. Um, so, I, you know, I lost my appetite for six months and dropped about 45 pounds, couldn't eat. Mm. Uh, and then had like a weird pancreatic attack where the lipase level is just through the roof. And then the next day it's back down to normal. Uh, kidneys started acting weird. They're getting weird creatinine levels. They're getting weird adrenal gland readings. Uh, and then it just goes back to normal. Uh, blood pressure goes, you know, hypertensive for six months and then back to normal for no reason. Uh, you know, I ended up getting um, uh, dissections and arteries uh, it's just a lot of really weird shit that doesn't fit in with cancer and a lot of really weird shit that doesn't fit in with this is the autoimmune we believe you have. So they ran a bunch of tests to try to figure it out. I had to go through um, a Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, uh, went to all their specialties. They did all their stuff. And at the end of it, they're like, we don't know what this is. We're going to put you in something called Diagnostic Odyssey. Uh, and we're going to do genetic testing to try to figure it out. Hmm. Uh, so, I, you know, it's it's kind of it's jumping from one thing to the next uh, cause the symptoms are all over the place. Like I've lost hearing, I've lost eyesight. Um, so they try to treat what they think could be uh, the autoimmune, like, you know, uh, with the ear, they think it's autoimmune inner ear disorder. So they're like, we're gonna put you on a shit ton of prednisone. Um, you know, with the eye thing, they're like, it could be ocular, you know, outer ocular palsy. It could be this uh, muscle disease. It could be this nerve disease. You know, we wanna do more uh, CTAs, more M uh, MRAs. Uh, you know, we wanna do these tests and these tests, but it wears you down, man. You know, like you're kind of running in to do this shit all the time. You're, yeah. like you're, you're making trips up to go do all this stuff. And you're like, can I just, you know, can we just take a break? You know, I ended up asking the hematologist. I was like, 
if you think it's an autoimmune disease and you don't know what it is, and I've got the cancer issue, can't you just combine both treatments and just say, let's just go with our best guess and hit it as hard as we can and hope that it clears it up? Um, and they're they're almost at that point. So uh, I, I don't know, which means they'll just put me on um, different, um, what are they called, biologics, and um, give me basically, it's like a split between kind of a, a, a chemotherapy and then a high dose steroid treatment. But yeah, so it's it, it's just been, it's been shit to be honest with you. But um, I, I don't know, you adapt and then you just deal with it as best you can, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love a good uh, visit to the doctors? <laughs> who doesn't love a good cancer saga? Yeah. Yeah, no, that uh, that's that sucks, man. I'm sorry you're you're going through that. And dude, when they're you know, doctors fucking don't know everything. Like they can give you the wrong shit. They're essentially just testing what they think is wrong with you, and the medicine they're giving you is probably causing shitty symptoms as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say the people at Mayo are doing um, their best. Yeah, they're really nice, and and you know, my general practitioner is really good about you know. Uh, trying to work with me and um, but I mean you know it, it, it's weird when you go to like because you have to understand these people aren't just like doctors these are the guys that write white papers and teach the courses for other doctors so it's weird to sit down with them after going through the testing process and have them say we don't know what the fuck is going on you know we we check for jack 2 mutations we check for this we check for that we don't we don't understand what's happening but we have the blood results we can see the imaging results and we can clearly see something is really fucking wrong, but we don't understand the mechanism behind it. So is it just a bunch of different diseases all commingling and hitting at once? Is it one overarching thing? Is it a genetic thing? Um, and so it's just, you know, it's the not knowing, I think, that's the biggest pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, and then you couple that in with, like, you know, because of COVID, half the specialists um, that you would go to see are shut down half the time. So it's like you try to, like, you schedule an appointment, like getting into rheumatology, right? Um, and that's five months out. And then when you're going to go see them, they have to shut down again. So it's another four months out. And it's just, it's such a pain in the ass. And that's even doing it through Mayo. So well, hopefully you have good health insurance, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's been fun. Yeah. No, uh, the, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, it, it's good medical care in America, but it's expensive medical care in America. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, I went from being a, a teacher where my health insurance is paid for to now, uh, having to pay out of pocket, and that's why my medical insurance is fucking terrible. But it still costs like three hundred dollars a month, and it like doesn't cover shit until I have a horrific accident. Yeah, yeah. When you look at like deductibles and uh, yeah, everything else that goes into the different uh, plans that you can get, if you're not going through like a employer, um, it can be uh, it can be some wild shit. But uh, with the uh, the cancer stuff and the the illness shit, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I got I got sick, and then I got. Uh, freaked out because I couldn't figure out what it was for a while. Uh, so I just uh, stopped doing internet shit for a while, for like a year. Um, and then uh, they still don't know what it is, but I've gotten so used to nobody knowing what the fuck's going on that I've, I guess I've adapted. It's your new normal, right? It's, yeah, you adapt pretty quick. Yeah, I remember like um, being a kid and hearing like, you know, people who've lost an arm or something talk about it. And they're like, yeah, you get used to it. I always thought, that's weird. How would you get used to it? But you really do. No matter how weird the shit is or um, bizarre it is. Uh, you really do just get used to it after a while. And I, I, were the coronavirus streams the last thing uh, before, like the the cancer hiatus, or? Yeah, so I mean, I I covered the coronavirus stuff from like uh, January to March, so it was like the very beginning. I think it had just like kind of started spreading in Italy uh, by the time I stopped doing those streams, and that was around the time that I started feeling sicker, um, and you know, kind of trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and yeah, I, I think I did like a, a guest appearance with like PPP on one stream and a guest appearance with somebody else on another stream. But as far as like, like content I was doing, yeah, that was the end of it. Um, and you know, I got sick and I was like, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't fucking care about this shit. I got to kind of focus on this kind of stuff. Yeah. You were oh. early, you were early on the, on the front of the coronavirus thing. That was very early. You had me talking to my mom and dad, like there's something bad happening and there's, to... there's something coming down the road. And they yeah. didn't, nobody believed me. I'm like, fuck dude. It was so weird, yeah, because, I mean, uh, when that first broke, right, like, China locked down half the country, and you're talking, like, 750 million people. It was so crazy. Um, and then it started to spread everywhere, you know, and, it, you know, you're going off, like, the history of SARS and MERS, and you're like, shit, where is this going to go? Um, and then, yeah, my own my own sickness and my own shit kind of came up, and I was like, well, I got I to gotta deal with this now. And, of course, uh, right at the height of it, right, so right as, uh, like, COVID becomes the biggest issue, I've got to go through the biggest medical system in the state, well, potentially the country because Mayo's pretty huge, um, and just deal like the the they're freaked out on their end. Just even having people come through, you got people from all over the world there, 
Um, so it was a really, it's a f- surreal fucking experience. Is that a coincidence? You think? I mean, we have Jim uh, on coronavirus's ass, and the next thing you know, he has an indescribable autoimmune disorder. Yeah, there you go. The Chinese got mad at me for constantly bringing up the uh, a virology institute that was down the street from that wet market. Decided to take me out. There you are. Man, what what a nightmare. Um, and then now you're now you're semi back. You're semi out of retirement, right? We have modern day Medicare. Who's yeah, I, I, you know, like I said, I've adjusted as much as I can. Um, I, you know, the issue's kind of still ongoing. Um, I, I just kind of want to enjoy, I think, the internet uh, for what I can. Because, uh, I mean, outside of like the illness stuff and all the other stuff, it just feels like uh, what made the internet so fun is kind of disappearing. Uh, everything's become very rule focused. Um, people can't make jokes really anymore or interact the way they want to. Uh, you know, the videos that you would have seen on YouTube 10 years ago, you're never going to see again on YouTube. Uh, the jokes that you could have told on Twitter five years ago or on Facebook five years ago, you can't tell those anymore. I mean, I don't even use Discord, but from what I understand, if you have a Discord and you say something somebody doesn't like, they'll just wipe your entire account, your Discord, everything. I love that. Right? So, I mean, it just, it sucks, right? And so I want to enjoy the little bit of it that's left while it's still here. Because I, I really do think in 10 or 20 years, um, when you try to explain to a kid what anonymity was on the internet, they're not going to believe it. They're going to be like, how could you, how could you be anonymous on the internet? That's crazy. No, you, you got to have uh, Suzanne's got to suck your dick before you can actually make an account anywhere now. Anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah. How could you be anonymous? How could you say mean things to people without being arrested? That's, that's insane. What yeah. about Suzanne? <laughs> that fucking bitch. No, uh, I, I think it, it's incredible because, you know, back in the in the day, and you've talked a lot of the stuff we're, we've talked about on the stream. You've talked about before, just uh, in different places. But um, back in the day, being anonymous was the the regular thing on the internet, right? Like you wouldn't want to be outed or doxed. Everyone was anonymous. Well, yeah, I mean that was like that was considered basic netiquette, right? Like you don't tell people what your name is, you don't tell them where you live, you don't tell them your phone number, your job, your school, you don't put pictures of yourself or your family up. <laughs> Like you, you create a persona, a username that's not associated to who you are, and then you use that username on one specific website, and you create different usernames for each website. That was just that was so basic, right? Um, that it's it's really weird now because everybody has everything's interconnected, right? The kid that has a YouTube channel links to his Facebook, his Instagram, his TikTok that all has, you know, friends and likes from his family, his school. Like, it takes you five seconds to find out their full name, their address, their phone number, what they look like, who they are, what they've done. It's like a total permanent record, and it's night and day from how it used to be. Yeah, now you have jackasses like uh, me with my full government name and, you know, where <laughs> I went to college, where I'm from. You can fucking, I have people messaging my dad on Facebook and shit. Well, this was mostly, I mean, too, this was mostly the idea was built around safety for kids, right? Like, you, you tell kids, uh, like, junior high and high school age, like, yeah, you, you protect your information. That was, like, drilled into your head. Um, and it made sense. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, you look at it now, it's really predatory on the Internet if you're a kid. Like, uh, it's, you know, you hear about, like, all this uh, grooming shit in Discord gangs, uh, right, to kind of touch on a recent event. Um, but, like, you know, back then, everybody thought, oh, well, you're talking to strangers. you got to protect yourself, so obviously you're not going to tell them who you are. But kids nowadays are like, oh, now I want to be a Minecraft live streamer at the age of uh, eight years old. <laughs> and here's how I'm going to be on camera all day. Yes, you have Call Me Carson fucking pulling up in the predatory Discord van asking me to hop in so he can <laughs> groom me into sending pictures of my little wiener. Yeah, basically, yeah. I love that. Um, no, but it, it, it is fascinating. And there a lot of the people, you know, we've talked about, um, they aren't around anymore. The internet uh, half-life is, is not that long. And you've... No, you're, 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 yeah, you're, I mean, you're essentially done. I, I've noticed that, again, it's just subjective. But at least what I've noticed is um, if you get big or even moderate-sized, um, you're there for five years, maybe ten if you're, like, cream of the crop, right? Like, if you've got a hook that can last, like AVGN or something. Uh, but most people, you kind of have a rise and fall in a five-year arc, and then you're done. Yeah, and you fizzle out. And then, you know, when you're like me and you have videos of you getting drunk and being a fucking retard on the Internet, then you can never get a job again. So. <laughs> well, that's always great, yeah. Then the boss can always take a look at all the dumb shit you do so he knows that you're skipping out when you call in sick. But, hey, you can't dox me, Jim. At least you can't dox me because I'm already doxed. You're dox-proof? Yeah. yeah. It's great. No, if I, I th- thinking thinking about it, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it would be a lot more comfortable just to be anonymous and not have to worry about uh, all that comes with your full name on the internet. 
I think too, it just made people more open. I mean, it, you're taking away like YouTube, right? And then like the social media stuff we use right now, just even going back to like older forums or message boards, just, just being able to talk to people and just say whatever the fuck you want without an identity tied to it uh, was pretty freeing, right? You could really say what you thought. You could make the jokes you always wanted to make and you had a good time. Um, now you just, you can't do that anymore because everybody wants to cancel your ass, right? Or they want to, they want to pin that on you for the rest of your life. Some kid says something stupid in seventh grade and now he's getting kicked out of, uh, Harvard <laughs> yeah. because, just cause somebody found it. Right. I mean, it's really dumb. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong, Jim. I, you know, I don't say any nasty words. I'm a good guy. You can trust me. <laughs> but, um, it, it is funny how in every dark corner of the internet, when people are actually allowed to say what they want, you know, it's all, there's a lot of N words, a lot of F words. There's a lot of, uh, you know, when you can say what you want, people, people typically <laughs> tend to say some pretty I, I think, crazy I think shit. It, yeah, I think it reverts back to just how people are. Like, um, there's a group, uh, let me see if I can remember the name of it, FIRE, right? I think it's uh, Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. So it's like a, a group that would defend college students when their, their campus would screw with them. It, it leans more conservative, right? Uh, but the guy that ran it, this little old Jewish guy, uh, talked about what it was like being in the Bronx when he was a kid. And he's like, yeah, we used to stick our head out the window and scream obscenities at each other. And he's like, that was just kind of the how the neighborhood was. Like everybody, nobody was hypersensitive. You could just talk however you wanted. And I feel like that's kind of how the internet was when anonymity was the biggest part of it, is you'd stick your head out the window and scream obscenities at each other. But it was fun. Uh, now everybody wants to use that as like a cudgel. Like how, how now it's how behaved can I be? And how can I make fun of people in the, uh, you know, uh, prescribed way in the appropriate way that'll get me ass pats and get them in trouble and it's just become weird well yeah it's like a, it's a, a, a tattletale off I'm, I'm so nice but look at him he's bad and uh, yeah it's complete bullshit yeah it's really become the I'm gonna tell the teacher mentality right you're like in the classroom you remember the kid that one kid that was like I'm gonna tattle yeah I mean that's really what it's become on all these different platforms and it just kind of it sucks the fun out of the room I think but it's not natural. I mean, it's the way they've curated it to be. Like, if it was a natural thing, you know, the internet would be how it was in its uh, in its heyday. You know? Yeah. No. I mean, I'd agree with that. I mean, look at look at Twitter and the evolution that that's gone through. Right. I mean, you had a a, a platform where you could tweet whatever you wanted, and sure, stuff got took down. Right. Uh, but for the most part, people could be rude and make uh, terrible jokes, and it was fun for a while. Uh, but with each iteration and update, a new uh, group of people that came into the company and the new terms of service. You started getting shadow banning. You started getting lists. You started getting, you know, uh, accounts that would be throttled. Um, now they've got this downvote system that's hidden, which I'm sure has something to do with interaction. So, you know, it's can we take you out of feeds? Can we take you out of interactions? Can we just make you disappear? And all you're left with are these people that um, are approved. So they can be malicious, but they're approved, right? And they're, they're being mean in the appropriate way. And it just, yeah, like I said, it sucks the fun out of it. And then one of the things that sucks is all the alternatives that get set up they all become very political right so it's either super left wing super right wing i just i just want a place where i can go and uh, we can call each other slurs <laughs> and everybody it's all fair game you know what i mean yeah and it's, it's not even possible in this day and age i guess there's uh what cozy or something cozy tv uh, you got like yeah you got cozy that's uh fuentes you've got parlor um, shut down right yeah you've got gab which was torba but i mean you know everybody they, they, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a ton of faith in it um, because it just feels like, again, it's going to become, I, I, I don't know, it's more of a, we set this up as a reaction to what was happening. So because of that, we're going to lean more one way than the other. What, I, what I'd love to see is somebody who had the money or financing or tech skill uh, just to create a website where like everything is fair game. There is no slant to it. Uh, as long as it's not illegal, uh, have fun. But I just I, I think that's never going to happen anymore. And it, it's also funny that you're like touted in, in some people's minds as like this far right wing person when that's like literally not even the case, really. You know, like uh, I, I like I, you know, I like uh, part of what I really like about the Internet is arguments because uh, they're entertaining and you can't have arguments. Right. If you segregate too much. Um, yeah. I enjoyed like having streams like Destiny. Right. I mean, he's more left leaning than I am. We had a stream. It was fun. We shit talked each other on Twitter. It was fun, and then he ended up getting banned, and it sucked because now I can't interact with him anymore. Um, oh I, yeah, I he, got, see... he got banned by the fucking uh, transsexual woman recently. Yeah, yeah, that that's more recent, but this is even further back. Um, and so, yeah, I want to be able to art. You can't if if you moderate too much, right? To try to create a um, 
marketable environment where people can sell Toyotas, uh, you know, and everybody's nice and they're well behaved. Uh, nobody's ever going to talk and have fun and just argue about whatever they want to argue about. I, I don't really care what your politics are. I, I just want to have and enjoy arguing with you, right? And that's that's part of, again, what made anonymity fun is you never knew who you were talking to. You could be arguing with the same person a thousand times in a row or a completely different person. <laughs> it yeah. was just you had no way of parsing through it. Yeah, I guess. And e even nowadays, like being anonymous isn't even a way that you can have free speech because, you know, they just shut you down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you brought up Destiny too, like with what's going on right now. So I believe what he said was something fairly banal. Uh, essentially, men shouldn't compete in women's sports, right? He's talking about like, you know, transsexual athletes. Um, but that was like, that was, I guess, the line in the sand. This person decided he needed to be destroyed for that. Um, and so they took credit for getting him banned on Twitch. And then they started going after him on Ooh. Twitter. Uh, you know, the whole ratio thing. Yeah. Uh, but but now that person has all this weird Discord stuff that's coming out about underage cat boys and callers. So I I don't know where that's going to go, but it'll be entertaining to watch. That's great. So wait, he just he just said that uh, that big jacked swimmer woman shouldn't be allowed to compete. Yeah, he he echoed the sentiment that I've heard from a lot of female uh, athletes. I'd say at like the high school or college level where they feel it's unfair. They're like, how can I compete against, uh, you know, somebody who was formerly male, right? Because mm. uh, they're going to have a physical uh, advantage over me in whatever sport we're playing. So he said, yeah, it's, it's. He said it was ridiculous or something to that effect. Uh, but they got really, really mad about that. Nah, at least hell that's, no, no. Fuck those white that, colonizing bitches. <laughs> that's let what let I the brother compete. It. I think. Uh, no, nah, I think it's great. It's, it's, it's one of the, you know, this is one of those topics. So. If you talk about this Leah transgender woman who's competing, it's been shown, I guess, by Destiny that if you disagree that she shouldn't be allowed to compete, then you can get banned, right? Yeah, essentially. So yeah, then, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, fuck, dude. Yeah, uh, uh, what's the right opinion? Let me see. Uh, no, uh, she shouldn't. She should be allowed to compete, right? Am I good, Susan? Am I cool? Well, yeah, and that's that's one of the weird things too about Twitch. Like, it's it's gone further and further down the rabbit hole of that. Like, it's got to be a prescribed form of speech and one opinion that's held by uh, the people in power. And if you if you even say if you even disagree in a nice way, right? You don't say slurs. You make you don't make jokes. You just say, "Hey, I think." Uh, you're silk shit kick. You're you're canned off of there. And at yeah. the same time, you've got chicks showing their tits off and taking baths. <laughs> no, it's like a, here's it's, a here's a gent a gentle intellectual point. Uh, you disagree with the mainstream narrative, and you're done. It's like when I was in college. You know, like when you're writing these papers to these professors because I got to educate a master's in education. I can't write whatever I want. I have to write a tailored opinion because I need to pass these classes. You know. It's, yeah, you said it was uh, for uh, education, right? Yeah, masters of arts in education. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you enjoy, because uh, I, I went through a similar program for a bachelor's, did you enjoy, uh, maybe this was just at my time, and you know, I guess it could vary from different you oh, know, university bad. to university, uh, where they had, uh, they, they would sit you down, because I was looking at like elementary as my age range, right? Yeah, that's what I was. Um, yeah, so they were like, well, we need, to, we need to talk about like how you pick curriculum, how the school district picks its curriculum, uh, and we're going to have you analyze the books, right, that we would, you know, hi hypothetically might be using for the year. Um, but can you tell me how many times they talk about uh, black people in this historical event or trans people or gay people? Where's the like representation? Yeah, it was a checklist. And if it didn't mm -hmm. have enough representation, it wasn't allowed. It was a bad book. Like a literal chart. And I'm like, well, how the fuck is the signing of, like, where am I going to find a, a black transsexual woman at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, you know? <laughs> it's like, I feel a little, I feel a little lost here with what you're trying to get me to do. Oh, dude, my, my education program was fucking crazy. But, you know, again, like, there's a lot of this stuff that I, I don't, uh, I don't talk about or whatever because, yeah, it would be fun and great to talk about if I could, but I see the landscape and it's like, you have one opinion, if you don't share that opinion, then you fuck your future up. You get deleted off social media, you know, you can't make money, whatever, whatever. So it's like, it, I just hate this, how it's set up. You know, it's no, complete no, bullshit. I, yeah, I, I agree. Um, and the education is it's like filtering out like there's a lot of people that probably couldn't even make it through an education program, not because of it's difficult, just because of like the brainwashing attempts they're making on you that are like obvious. You're like, this is ridiculous. At one point I had to do like a checklist. It was it was not a checklist. It was a chart. I still have the, the document somewhere. Uh, it was like a chart about what I th what I used to think about all these groups, gay people, Native Americans, black people, Jewish people, whatever. Uh, where I learned those things, how I corrected those thoughts, and like where I learned to correct those thoughts. So it was like I had to admit that I was racist towards everybody and had preconceived negative things, and then explain like how I got over it. Like, is that not the most like uh, rigged assignment of all time? Yeah, I, I like that it's moved. I mean, it, it, it's moved past just like the idea of brainwashing. It, they want you to thank you for, or thank them for it afterwards. 
right? They want to they want to change your viewpoint forcibly and then make you say thank you afterwards. That's that's kind of what that kind of uh, 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 assignment s says to me. I mean, and, and then the other thing that really pissed me off when I went through like this program is they didn't care about kids. Hell no. <laughs> That really blew my mind when I saw what the bureaucracy was like. When I had kids who were writing in the third grade their letters and numbers backwards and couldn't spell words. And I knew, you know, that, that that's a benchmark, right? When they talk about reading ac or literacy, you know, kind of going forward, you know, the, the age cutoffs for when you really need to do something and intervene. And so, you know, I'm talking to the people and I'm like, well, couldn't we set up maybe like an after school thing and volunteer to kind of help catch them up? And they're like, no, we can't do that. And then I sit in on a meeting where they're talking about, we just got $10 million for iPads. And I'm like, okay, so you're not going to help the kid learn how to read and write, but you're going to spend 10 million bucks on iPads. I'm sure that's going to have proprietary software, right? That's going to cost even more money. And none of that's going to help them get where they need to be so they're not, uh, you know, flunking out of high school 10 years from now. I mean, as long as he can get a diamond sword in Minecraft, I don't really give a shit, Jim, if he can read or write. It, it, was, okay. it was a wild experience. The bureaucracy was just, uh, yeah, I remember talking to one of my professors about it. He told me about his wife, who was a kindergartner uh, teacher, you know, crying, uh, coming home from work, talking about just how fucking awful it had become. It, I mean, it gets bad, and, I, I, you know, obviously, uh, I'm not going to ask if you went through with it and became a teacher, but I did, like, finish my master's and become an actual teacher from Montgomery County, Maryland, and it was, it was ridiculous. I, I always say this. I've said it a bunch of times on the Internet. My biggest complaint was that uh, there was no punishment for the kids. You know, growing up at home, if you do something bad, you know, you get grounded. There's usually some negative repercussion that comes from misbehaving, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. how kids learn. And uh, it... The school I was at, you couldn't take away kids' recess. There was no lunch detention. There was no after-school detention. All you could do was call their parents. But obviously, if a second grader is, like, throwing scissors and saying b bad words and not doing his assignment, obviously his parents are fucked up, right? So my one line of communication is to fix his behavior is talk to his parents. His parents don't give a fuck, right? So it's just, oh, like, yeah. a nightmare no, situation we, where it's like, all right, this kid can do whatever he wants. There's no lunch detention. Why would – if I'm thinking about it from this kid's perspective, why would he even listen? Right? There's They're no... not going to. There's no. There's no repercussion. Yeah. During my practicum, right, um, we had one kid, one little girl, who knew this, so she would get up on the desk and like kick stuff around the room and scream and Hell use yeah. slurs, and, and she knew she was untouchable, untouchable. You could do nothing, right? There was no repercussion for that behavior, and everybody else in the classroom was just screwed. They're fucked, right? The, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Well, it, why wouldn't you act like that? I mean, if I could go on YouTube and just fuck off and. You know, not, never post a video and do whatever and still get paid the same amount or still get the same amount of, like, growth. I would do it, right? Like, you're incentivized by negative things happening, right? Like, yeah. Um, you know, I post a shitty video, it gets shitty views. I want to make a good video. Like, everything in life, there's negative repercussions. And you strip that away from a child. It's like, my God. Right. Well, I mean, it's just, yeah, it, it reached a point where um, it wasn't just that teachers were informed that they can't really intervene for misbehavior. It's where kids figured this out. That's when it really became a shit show. Yeah. Once once the kids figured it out, of course they're going to be like, well, pff, what are you going to do to me? Of course they're going to do whatever they want. They're kids. And my school would actually do this thing that if a kid was disruptive enough, they would he wouldn't have to engage in the assignment. He could just have a computer and be in the back of the class, which it's like, dude, I'm taking the computer route every day. If I was a kid, I'm saying fuck you to this teacher until I get my computer, and I'm gaming. Right, right. And then, the, so it was funny to me to kind of watch all this stuff kind of play out, right? You know, the, the talk about money, what they were going to dedicate time to, how they deal with misbehavior, what kind of programs they were going to run, what kind of curriculum they had. And then, um, you know, talk to people in the program and be like, okay, well, what happens 10 years from now, right? Like, uh, this is how you're treating it now, but like, what do you foresee them being like in high school? Are they going to go to college? And every one of them was like, oh, no, they're never going to, they're never going to, you know, go, well, they'll, we'll pass them so we get the, um, because they had a specific, at least in Minnesota, they had a specific list in the school district for how many students of each uh, demographic that they needed to pass. That's all they cared about. Meet the so as long as those, yeah, as long as those boxes were ticked, they didn't care. So, yeah, I, I actually quit the program. I had enough credits just to take a, a, a my bachelor's, a general bachelor's and just walk away. Um, so I wasted all that time going through this into a, you know, a profession I thought I was going to love, um, you know, having this idealistic viewpoint of what it was going to be like. It's going to be great, you know, inform the minds of the future kind of thing. And uh, just seeing the brutal reality of nobody gives a shit. Uh, they only care about quotas. It's a big money game. And they just want to kick the can down the road until it becomes a big issue later on, as long as it's not their problem. Right. Um, and I'm like, there's no way I can. There's there's literally nothing I can do about this. I'm going to be chewed up and spit out and be like that dude's wife crying 
Uh, cause, you know, I'm fucking powerless. Oh, come on, don't be black pill, Jim. Dedicate your life to the misery and the insanity. Oh, jeez, yeah. No, so it was, uh, it was an eye-opening. You know, the one thing I got out of that entire thing is I think that job shadowing should be a, um... Illegal? Uh, uh, no, I think job shadowing <laughs> should be required. So when you go to college and you say, I want to do this, I think the college should pay for it and put you through a week or two of job shadowing so you can see the, the absolute reality of it so you don't waste four years. <laughs> Uh, like I did, getting to that point and being like, oh shit, I made a mistake. Oh, I say I say a job shadow should be illegal because I had to do 134 full work days as an intern, um, unpaid, which was like, god damn. Are, are we talking like practicum or is this outside of the... Is this this for is the for masters? my master's, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's brutal. It was so much and it was so hellish and uh, so much of it was just me like... I mean, I guess you need to have the experience. Whatever, I'm not going to complain about it. But it, it was, uh, man, at least three dollars an hour or something, so I can get a fucking chicken biscuit or something. Yeah, yeah. They all. I, I love the attitude too from a lot of uh, uh, universities and colleges where it's, um, well, you'll figure it out. <laughs> We're going to put you in a situation that's a, you know, going to financially kind of, kind of fuck you up your ass, but you'll figure it out. It's not really our problem. Yeah, you're paying. I know you're paying us twenty thousand dollars, but can you just work for free? And we're not really going to teach you. You're going to figure it out. Yeah, I, I love that attitude, by the way. Like, I'm paying for the service, but yet I'm still treated like they're giving me charity. You know what I mean? That always drove me nuts. Oh, yeah. Like, no, no other business operates that way. I, I don't walk into a car lot to buy a vehicle and then have them treat me like shit and be like, well, you should be thanking us. Yeah, no, I'm should. paying you for something. What are you talking about? Yeah, these, like, asshole, uh, you know, arrogant teachers that are fucking abusing their power on you. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I, I think, too... Um, I'm, I, I guess I'm glad I went through it when I did because I bet it's even worse now. I bet it's even worse if you're going through it right now um, for the kind of hell of shit you've got to deal with. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, so when I was going through uh, even my art degree, it's like this, it's the same thing. Um, like, you know, Trump was in office during my last years of uh, getting my art degree, and it was like everyone in my class is talking bad about Trump, right? And I'm not some, like, hardcore, like, right-wing Trump dude, but it's like, Maybe I want to fucking give a counterpoint to these people, but you, you know, you, my God, if you do that, you're going to be like hum in the town square. I, I just, oh, I, just yeah. I hate when yeah, you're in a situation you're where everyone's talking about something and agreeing on the same topic, but if you like were to offer a counterpoint, it's like then you're going to get destroyed. I just hate that, uh, that situation. Right. Well, I mean, I think the idea of like the old fashioned concept of a liberal education, which meant like a, a great uh, kind of breadth of stuff um, and different thoughts and, uh, you know, uh, ideas being put forward, that, that's dead. Like, yeah, you, there, there are opinions you just, you're never going to be allowed to express in any kind of uh, degree field that you want to enter, right? Yeah. Um, whether, whether it's education, business, art, whatever. I feel like this um, shouldn't be allowed to talk. I mean, if we're going to, if we're going to do this whole fucking theatrics, I feel like, you know, if I'm a student, I, my teacher shouldn't be allowed to talk about political stuff. It's kind of how I feel. I, I would, I would think it'd be great if it was just teach the fucking subject right I, I agree with you like if i'm going to a math class just teach me math right that seems pretty straightforward yeah. if, if i'm paying for a business class teach me business if it's an art class show me how to paint you know um but it, it's not that they always infuse it right but that's because of that um intersectionality stuff that's become mm, like the intersectionality dude thank you for using that great yeah. word right that's the underpinning of it all now though so it can't just be a math class or an art class or an english class or whatever Everything is, you know, intersectional. Now everything touches on everything else. So now, uh, when we're talking about verbs, we also have to talk about racism for some reason. Yeah, uh, that that stuff's beautiful. And then remember the mantra that they had at one point: uh, "Silence is violence." That was very groundbreaking. Oh. I was like, "That's why you people won't shut the fuck up." Okay. That's right. If you if you're if you abstain from voicing your opinion, then you are agreeing with the point we're arguing against. Right? It's very, uh, what is it called, a Kafka trap? <laughs> where if, if you don't answer, you're guilty, but if you do answer, it proves your guilt. So, you yeah. know, it's just, it's a no-win situation. The old witch trick, we're going to throw them in the fucking water, see if they sink or not. But yeah, that, that, that shit's unbearable. Um, so let's look here. I, I guess we've covered our, our bases pretty good on the medical lore. Obviously, it goes incredibly deep. You could talk about any of these topics for fucking hours, but... Yeah, I, I mean, at the, you know... I, at the end of the day, it was a fun forum while it lasted, where you got to laugh at really goofy shit. But the admin decided he wanted to change his life and delete everything, so it, it went the way of history. Come on, Haberman, you could have just been gay and funny. You didn't have to choose. Right? I, that, again, that, I'll never understand that. I, I, one of the other guys that uh, I still kept in touch with, Nervatel, um, didn't get it either. He was like, you know, 
he he couldn't really figure out why Haberman thought that. I mean, yeah, we would have made jokes about him sucking dick or something, but that would have been the same as every other joke we made, you know? Um, so I don't know why he... He, he really, I, I don't know, maybe he went super political and thought like, oh, it's more than just gay. Um, you know, I'm super, <laughs> super, I'm super liberal now, right? And It's uh, more than the, just gay. It's more than just gay. And they'll, they'll hate me because I'm not conservative. I, I don't know, you know, but um, while he was around, he was a funny guy. I don't know why, why he uh, decided to uh, change like that, but he did. Yeah. Who's one of your favorite people you've covered uh, in all your internet days? Like someone that comes to my mind who I really like, uh, Terry Davis. Yeah, I like Terry Davis. Um, like his, his his operating system was wild. His whole story was wild. He was a pretty funny guy. He was pretty well adjusted, um, but he had a lot of people screw with him. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there you know people just browsing G or if it was a group that was dedicated to it. But um, they would like spoof emails and screw with him um, a little too much, in my opinion. But uh, Terry was a fun guy uh, with a wild story. That's like a guy that has raw talent. Who, if he didn't have like that mental issue, you know that he would have been really successful in tech, right? Like he would have been a guy that probably would have done something crazy, not crazy as an in insane, but like crazy as in, oh, that's a really brilliant approach to like some kind of piece of software or hardware. Um, but yeah, I think he was always handicapped by that, you know, his mental illness. So it was a really fascinating story uh, to kind of watch this guy um, and kind of see that like he was still, even with his condition, struggling to do something. And he came out with, you know, Temple OS, which is just, crazy and amazing in itself yeah i mean you call it a mental illness i call it a superpower because i think that those cia motherfuckers <laughs> were on his ass his tweets were so wild and that's another thing like you know i, I like i don't think you could have a terry davis now right like there with, with just yeah. one of those tweets he'd be gone you know <laughs> yeah, he was i don't know what schizophrenia does to you but you start kicking some serious bars when you, yeah he was really throwing them out there man oh man i'd love to hear a hip-hop track by terry davis Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, he did. He used the drum. There's, there's some dancing videos of Terry and you know, okay. doing some drums and stuff. Yeah, laying down some tracks. He's a hip hopper. I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, who else comes to mind besides Terry Davis? Some of your, you know, funny people that you talked about. Uh, like just as far as like interesting stuff that's gone on, on the internet. Um, I, I mean, it mostly comes down to groups, right? Um, so you you have stuff like again, I found Tumblr just fascinating. I found DeviantArt fascinating. Yeah, DeviantArt. We didn't talk about that. Yeah, because, I mean, the people on DeviantArt, again, you've got, like, it's it's just, I feel bad. There are some artists on DeviantArt and other, you know, art websites that are super talented, like, can really draw really well, um, but they can't find work. And so they're forced to draw, like, inflation furry porn to pay their rent. And I feel so bad for those motherfuckers, man. No, I, sw I swear to God, I, kn I know a dude when I was, uh, he was a, um, what are they called? Teacher's assistants, right? Like, it was a, a paraeducator. That's what they're called. There was a paraeducator at one of the schools I taught at that was one of those dudes that was an incredible artist, but he was working as a paraeducator and couldn't, he didn't have a career in art, but he would like draw like sexualized images he didn't even want to draw <laughs> because he could get paid. And I knew this dude like personally, and it was, he was like very autistic, uh, incredible artist though. Shout out to uh, Hale Thorpe Elementary, if I may say that. Frank, my homie. <laughs> I don't know if I should have said that, but no one cares. No one cares. Well, and you know, the, the other crazy thing too is like, um, you know, I think a lot of them again were forced to kind of draw this artwork to survive, and then then you know kind of later on comes Patreon where they can make real money doing what they want. Mm -hmm. So so there's a group of like you know talented artists, talented starving artists that had to draw furry porn for like a decade, and now they get to look at all these 18 year olds that are making a hundred thousand dollars a fucking month on Patreon doing what they love, and I bet they hate that. Yeah, they're probably super resentful. <laughs> yeah. Now, shout out Patreon. You you actually got uh, shit canned off Patreon. So how the oh, fuck does that happen? Is it is it like does it happen in a wave of? Because um, I've seen your like, your shit detailing, how YouTube you know gave you these ridiculous strikes when you already had um, unlisted your shit or privatized your shit, right? Yeah. So the the Patreon thing happened first. Um, that was from the Transtastic Tales videos I did. Um, so I did a video that I knew couldn't go on YouTube, so I put it up on BitChute. And uh, somebody at Patreon saw it and didn't like it, and that was the end of my Patreon. And oh that's why. Um, and then I started getting, uh, I got a strike on one of my videos. I can't remember what it was, but it was a strike on one of my YouTube videos. And I was like, okay, this is, they're, they're going to try to just completely shut me down. So my idea was, uh, they can't, <laughs> like you were like, oh, I can't be doxxed because I'm 
I'm already doxxed, right? My, yeah. my image is out there. So I was like, well, you can't, you can't strike my videos if I don't have any videos. Yeah. So I took down all my videos and I was like, now let's see what you're going to do, Susan. Um, and they bitch. still hit my channel. They, they still hit my channel. They're like, oh, you're reusing assets from somebody else, but there are no videos there. I love, you know, Susan doesn't play by the rules, Jim, you silly motherfucker. Okay? She's a wild card. You can't contain her. It's when she gets that Francia in her, she's just, she's off to the races. That harlot. Yeah, so uh, they, they struck the channel for that, and then they demonetized it. Um, and I'm like, okay, uh, I'll play along. I'm going to do uh, weather videos. I'm going to do weather videos where it's just my voice, and I do stick figure drawings and MS Paint, and there's nothing you can do about it. And it worked. <laughs> I got the I got remonetized and my channel came back. Really? Yeah, yeah. Everybody was like, "That's never gonna work. You're never. They're never gonna remonetize and re. You know, f they're not gonna fix your channel because you do stupid weather videos, Jim. That's the dumbest thing possible. It totally worked. Weatherman Jim passes all expectations. That's right. Yeah. If they come after your channel, just remember weather videos and MS Paint. It's the it's the way to go. It works. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know like uh, if I've done anything bad to cross the line and get destroyed, but um, it's gonna be a horrible day when they delete my my shit. Cause you know, I got everything riding on this. I don't make money anywhere else. Well, it comes in a wave. I mean, it, it does come in a wave. Cause yeah, right after Patreon, it was YouTube, uh, and once before that too, this had happened where they they tried taking down like my Facebook, Twitter, YouTube all at once. Um, you know, I love how they say like all these different companies never communicate. They they totally do because it's the people that work at them that know each other. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I got, I got that one reversed, and then I, I got the, the more recent one reversed. So, I mean, I'll do a live stream occasionally, but if I wanted to do a video, I'd have to put it up on, like, a BitChute or Odyssey or, uh, uh, what was it, Cozy or, you know, somewhere else. I could, there'd be no way for me to put it on YouTube because everything is over the line now. Yeah, you think you, when you post some of your regular content, it's just done immediately? Oh, yeah, if I try to do, like, a new Black History Month video... Or if I try to do like a new Tumblrisms video or like a Internet Insanity video or just any of that stuff. Because, um, I mean, it's gone. They have so many new rules in place that are like it, it's gone beyond uh, using slurs and being aggressive. It's like if you're if you're just mean, they can take your stuff down now. Yeah. And the rules do not seem to be overtly clear. No, no. I, I, I mean, I know YouTube said, "Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, post an updated terms of service that more explicitly explains what's going on." But I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's just I don't understand what's going on at Alphabet, you know, um, and Google and YouTube. Um, I, it's funny to watch the original co-founders of the website leave comments occasionally because they have over the years saying, "If we'd known it'd be like this, we wouldn't have sold." Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't think this is how they envisioned it either. They probably, but who cares? I mean, they're billionaires, so what do they give a shit? What, what, do, you, what do you think is in, in store for you? I mean, does, have the doctors told you any kind of, they have no idea what's going on? Are they like, you know, you could be rocking for the next 20 years, or is it like you're, you're kind of fucked? Uh, well, I, I mean, it's, it's degenerative, and the fact that it's a loss of function, right? So hearing loss, vision loss, that kind of stuff. Um, is it deadly? They, they don't know. Um, the cancer in itself, treatable. Uh, you know, you could have a good prognosis with that, but I, I don't know. If it's some weird, fucked up genetic thing, who knows? Uh, so I'll just, like I said, you know, uh, try to navigate that minefield while they're still, you know, off and on about the pandemic and while they're, you know, Biden and Putin are uh, banging dicks against each other. So, you know, who knows what goes on with that? But uh, it's, it's, it's wild. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I wonder what's going to happen. What's the, what's the future of uh, the Mr. Medicare channel? It's interesting. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, it, it, even if I were still putting out content, like, I, I'll put it this way. Even if I was still putting out content regularly and uh, Susan wasn't screwing with me and I had, like, a special pass, um, I've already hit, like, like I said, you got, like, five years, right? Mm -hmm. I, I've already hit that. That's my, so my wave is done. I mean, it's really what's the next guy going to do, you know, and how long can they kind of perpetuate and keep going? Because there, there are a lot of people putting out really great stuff. Um, that have to like walk through the minefield now of what's uh, acceptable or unacceptable. Um, I, I'd be more interested in like what is YouTube going to be like in five years? You know, can you even sustain it that long uh, trying to do it fresh and starting brand new? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm very curious what the, what the state of the internet's going to be like in five years. Well, yeah, what YouTube's going to be like. Yeah, I think they're going to do the um, the real ID thing. I think that's going to be like the. I think it'll be back end, right? So I, I, I think uh, maybe it's implemented at like an ISP level, but it will be, we need your ID, 
and then um, when you sign up for an account, you can use a username, but we have in our records that that username is tied to this identity. Well, um, you think, just, and then just, hate speech is going to be like uh, a, a punishable offense by law? I don't know if it'll like. I envision like it's baby set or baby steps when it comes to controlling kind of stuff like this. So I, I think yeah, I think a real ID is going to be a thing. It'll be back ended, and I think that will become accepted as the norm over the next five years. And then I think they'll start to kind of come in with the oh by the way this is now illegal or by the way this is now not allowed after you're already kind of screwed and you've given them your ID. My God. Yeah, I'm very curious as to what's going to happen. I don't, I don't feel that optimistic about my future on the internet because uh, I'm, you know, I'm 26 right now. I can't, can't imagine I'll be able to make shit when I'm like 30. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's going to have to be like mass appeal stuff, right? And, and you're not going to be able to talk about certain stuff. I mean, I think that's the only way. It, it's going to be. I don't even know. It's it just, yeah. It, it really has become like sterilized so people can sell Toyotas. <laughs> And uh, nobody says mean things to each other, so I it, it kind of, I don't have like a super optimistic out uh, like viewpoint, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I'll enjoy it while it lasts. It's still fun right now, so might as well ride it down in flames, you know. Yeah, but you know, laughing at absurdities almost that's almost like a fucking what watered down like um, Tosh point oh ridiculousness. You know, you the whole finding something ridiculous, some internet subculture, some weird thing tucked away and laughing at it, making fun of it. You know, there's always going to be a an audience for that shit. It just sucks, you know, I guess, YouTube well, and the internet. Yeah, it's, it, it's human nature, right? I mean, that's it's almost hardwired into us. There's always going to be an audience for people that want to um, look at something that's just bizarre and have a laugh, you know, or be like, what the hell is going on? You know, it, it, it's just kind of part of what we are. Um, and, and so, yeah, it is kind of weird seeing them t- stifle that because um, it just seems counterintuitive, I guess. Yeah, I think you get the, you get the raw end of the stick because, I mean, I don't know. I guess you just you've just said the bad words you're not supposed to say, but you're not like your your mo is not to be political and drive people to the right wing or you know be some. If you, if you're watching my shit, I'm trying to f- convince you or coerce you into my po- political leanings. Well, I mean, I, I do. I you know I've always been open that I'm I'm conservative and I, I lean right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I don't think that. I mean, I, I don't think that necessarily is something that's necessary when you're talking about, hey, look at this furry who shit himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that's more of like, uh, look at this is kind of like an absurdity, right? Um, and, and that's what's entertaining about it. We don't need to make it doesn't have to be political to laugh at a furry that poops himself. It doesn't have to be political um, to, uh, you know, look at these communities or individuals and be like, this is really screwed up or this is bizarre. Um so I guess that's my take on it. Yeah, get a hoot out of it. Shout out to uh, yeah. Randy Stair and fucking murder situations. Yeah, that was that was a wild one too. The whole I'm going to reincarnate as a uh, female ghost uh, was just so bizarre. In those animations he made, they were top notch. You'd think like it was a cry for help, <laughs> right? Somebody should have been like, dude, that's his parents should have been like, what the fuck? The baby's spending a little too much time alone. Yeah, you know, I give you a good example, of, like. Uh, one of the things I think is kind of shitty about YouTube right now, um, Jim Can't Swim, right? Uh, that channel that does like the um, analysis of like murder cases where they'll go over like suspect footage of the interview at the police station. Wait, that's J- JCS criminal psychology thing? Yeah, he's gone. He's done. That's Jim Can't Swim? That's what that's called? Yeah. That um, was the original name of the channel, yeah. Oh, he's um, done. His videos are great. I've literally watched every one of them. Yeah, yeah, but YouTube shit kicked him, so he can't do them anymore. The same dude that did uh, this, this is what acting crazy looks like? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, if you go read his community page, he's like, this is it. It's over. Why? Because his videos violate terms of service, which is ridiculous, because they're probably some of the more entertaining videos you're ever going to see on the platform. They're not mean-spirited. Um, they're, he's not using slurs. He's not attacking protected groups. He's literally covering uh, you know, real-time events or you know, these murders, these cases, and he, that's it. He's done. So, I mean, he's gonna, I think he's going to try to work something else out through maybe Patreon or something else, but... Um, I found his channel entertaining, and I think it sucks that it's gone. And if if he can't make it, I sure as shit know that the stuff I would do is never going to fly. Yeah, I mean, his was very, like, by-the-book, like, in, intellectual breakdowns of interrogation footage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there, I can't think of what would have been uh, not acceptable in his videos. Uh, or look at somebody like um, uh, Internet Historian. Like, I, I feel like even his stuff is going to be something they're going to go after next. And that's mostly just that's mostly just comedy, you know. Yeah. Man, yeah. I wonder. 
because I want to put this uh, like little video essay documentary type thing out once I whip it together. I'd like to put it on my main channel. I wonder how YouTube will uh, react to that. Yeah, I mean, it's a crapshoot, right? And that's the worst kind of mentality to put somebody in of, hey, I've got this really great idea to do like a video or a series or to put something out. Um, but am I allowed to? Because like once you get into the mindset of am I allowed to, it starts to stifle your creativity, right? Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I, I mean, I think it sucks because I bet there are a lot of really funny people out there who are probably like very new or very young, 16 to 20 years old, that could be making really great stuff. But in the back of their head, they're like, they'll never let me. Right. And they're never going to take off because of that. Well, yeah, and that's why I mean, I have zero Internet online presence until like I made this YouTube stuff. Like I did shitty fucking music, but I wasn't making any videos because I knew I was trying to be a teacher. And I was like, if I put out content that I want to make, I'm never going to be able to be a teacher. So that's why I was like. MIA off the internet till I was like 24. Yeah, right? Because, uh, yeah, it's it's just... It, it, you, I don't think people that should be the situation they're put in. You know, am I going to lose my job? Are they going to come after my family? Am I going to be thrown off the internet? Is every avenue of um, uh, revenue going to be cut off from me? Just because I want to do a funny joke or make a video about a serial killer or talk about a, a political topic or express whatever opinion or create some kind of piece of art. Um, it's a really horrible, horrible environment to create, and they all seem really gung ho about doing it on every platform right now. It's it's the greatest. Or I mean, you don't even do anything wrong. All you do is um, step away from uh, helping Ethan Ralph create content, and then he's gonna tell everyone that you're a, a racist. Oh, that was insane to me. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen I have I haven't seen somebody make a threat like that since like old YouTube. There was a group that did that that used to do that um, to screw with people. They'd go to their neighborhood and put up posters. So it was really weird hearing him be like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> it was surreal, to be honest. That is a hilarious thing to think about doing. Put up, like, flyers with someone's face on it. Like saying yeah, they're I, a pedophile or they're a racist uh, or a <laughs> supremacist. It's, it's quite literally what they did. Yeah, they would go to a neighborhood, and there was this uh, autistic slap fight, and um, they would put up posters on phone poles, like, five blocks over, five blocks up. And uh, those videos are long gone. I can't, I'm trying to remember the name of the group. If I looked it up, I probably could find it. Maybe there's still an ad article on it. Um, but, like, that's really old, old stuff. Like, I haven't seen somebody do that in a long time. So when Ralph was like, I'm going to go to Gators College, and, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell everybody he's a white supremacist, and I'm going to get him fired. I was like, that's some really underhanded shit, man. It's just, just so stupid. It doesn't even make sense. Like, what? <laughs> that's where you're taking this, Ethan? Come on. Right. Yeah, it's internet shit, man. Keep your keep your internet shit on the internet. Um, yeah, and for someone, it's in his position to want to do that. The life ruination shit is uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, especially with the guests you have on, right? Because I mean, he has a, a fairly amount, uh, a fair amount of um, conservatives come on, right? Or people that have already been deplatformed because they're conservative, or even far right people. So to make like that threat and then have the guests that you have is really weird. That's what I'm saying, and, and then it's like, so anyone who works with you in the future are possible suspect, like, p people that you're going to, you know, portray them as these horrible white supremacist alt-writers, like, you're fucking retarded, it's your show you're running, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, I know. That's why Gator yeah. came into contact with them, it's because of you. Yeah, it, it was some, it was some really, it was, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> so stupid, man, to be honest with you, it's just, it's a bad look, it's just, yeah, life ruination stuff, um, it's fairly old school, um, uh, it's more malicious than the life or, or it's more malicious than the cancel stuff you see now but it, i feel like it's coming back like everybody's like oh no this is what we need to do um one way or the other it's weird yeah speaking of life ruination uh what was your take did you ever talk publicly about uh chris chan's mistress isabel uh whatever the fuck her name was uh uh jinkies jankies or whatever her name is yeah that sweet girl wasn't that the name that he used when he tried to... Wasn't it like Chinky Jankies or something like that when he tried to get into the troll group? I can't remember. But, um, yeah, Isabel Janky, I think, is the name. Um, yeah, that was a crazy like, fucking mess. That was that was a massive clusterfuck. And now, from what I understand, Chris is like in a... He's getting like a psychological evaluation to see if he can aid in his own defense. So it's going to be another six months of a continuance before he goes to trial, if there is a trial. Um, and, you know, somebody was saying like the, the charge he has against him right now carries like a maximum penalty of i think like a year so technically what could happen is by the time that he's done getting his psych evaluation he will have served more time than he could possibly get as a maximum for his sentencing and they would just let him go my man's smooth sailing i wonder if that's what his lawyer's doing i wonder if his lawyer's like no dude just act crazy 
um, act like you're a lunatic, not not hard to pull off for him, and we'll burn time until basically you're free to go. I was hoping he was going to get put in the women's prison and the generational uh, dimensional merge was going to happen, and that was going to be him getting <laughs> hella pussy in prison. <laughs> I, I, what I'm really, I, like, more than the prison saga, what I'm super uh, interested in is knowing, like, what is he going to do when he's out? Like, there's yeah. no way he's going back to his house, right? Bruh. They're just not going to let that happen. His toys are gone. <laughs> All his stuff is gone. He has no money. Is he going to live on the streets? You know, is he going to live in a halfway house? Is is there going to be, like, is he, he's going to have to get a job. Um, so, like, it's going to be wild when he gets out of prison. I think it's going to be a bigger... A bigger arc in Christian's life than him in prison right now. I'll, I'll say this: I'll pay. I would pay top dollar for a Christian interview if I could interview that guy. I'll pay pay for a hotel for him for a week. He'll do an interview. With he'll, me. he'll he'll probably take you up on it. I would, can you imagine that? On. Just me and Christian in a hotel room, completely unbiased interview, letting him speak his thoughts about you know having sex with his mom and fucking the dimensional birds. Well, you know, I watched that. Uh, is it Gino Samuel who did like the sixty part documentary on him? Yeah, that's like, that it's a grinder. Yeah, there's like an hour each, but there's one video kind of near the end of it, like part 40 to 50, somewhere in there, where he goes to like a convention, and it's uh, they're, they're, they're showing a video, <laughs> a documentary about him. But like, if you watch the convention video, everybody's high-fiving him and hugging him. Is that when he's and, like on the ground throwing a fit? Oh, no, no, this is like, this is a, another one. This is another one. So oh, like, man. he's, it was, so it was supposed to be like making fun of him, but like everybody's like hugging him and high-fiving him, and he looks so happy. And I'm like, that's like, that's the moment in his life where it could have gone one of two ways, where he ends up in prison for having sex with his mom, Ooh. or or he parlays this into becoming popular, you know, and rides that wave. And he went, he went to bang in his mom. He, he took the wrong route. He took the wrong road. Yeah. God damn. No, the Christian stuff's hilarious. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not going to debate the, the morality of laughing at someone who has whatever kind of dysfunction he has, but, I mean, he's putting the stuff out there, and no one stopped him for years and years, so I think I'm at liberty to, to get entertainment out of it. At this point, it's gotten so ridiculous. I mean, this, is, this isn't this is like, I, you know, I mean, you might, uh, you could have an argument if it was just the, well, I, it's weird with Christian, right? When you look at his trolling in the beginning, it was people mocking his art and trying to get him to, like, spurg out or make more Sonichu. Right, it was almost very lighthearted. Yeah, like even the early stuff, like Liquid Chris stuff, right, was just somebody pretending to be him to try to convince him that they were Christian. It worked amazingly. <laughs> right, right. So it was it was more lighthearted, but it got it got a meaner tint to it as it went on. Um, but and then yeah, now with this to, Isabel shit, it's like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, yeah. But he seemed to like he seemed to get more and more conf. It was like he he went along with it, right? Like he he started to want to engage with it more, which was weird. Um, and then you get to the idea guys, which is, I think Gino's just talk, touching on now with the dimensional merge and Neptunia stuff and CPU goddesses where they convince them all of all this shit. Um, so that'll be, uh, I, I think his mind is fried. Like, doesn't he think he's Jesus now? Wasn't that what his most recent letter said? That was his last take is that he's, he's God. Yeah, no, really. I think I'm pretty sure he declared himself like God, like the son of God and like a CPU goddess from a video game too. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't seem like the uh, the trans lifestyle is really treated him well. It seems like it's gotten dark for him. No, you know, or, there's that there's that, there's that pipeline, you know, that I've heard brought up before the incel to uh, to truning out pipeline. So there might be something to that, but it it didn't work out well for him. No, my God, you, you know what I got great uh, a great kick out of your five hour uh, little interview on Porcelain's channel. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, he was like, yeah, let's um, get together. He, he wanted song clips for his documentary. Um, and he's like, well, you know, I'll, I put together like a, a reel, right? We'll just sit down. We'll talk about it. I'll kind of explain the backstory and um, uh, we'll go over it. And then I'll just use some of the audio from that. But then he ended up putting the uh, uh, the the call up as like an interview. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. It was a good time. Yeah, I mean, it was incredibly entertaining. If anyone's a Medica fan out there and they haven't seen that, I would definitely watch that that thing. I watched the full thing. I, I didn't. I wasn't that familiar with Mersh before that. But coming out of that five-hour fucking escapade, I mean, that well, was... nobody. Apparently, nobody was. But like, he took his chat. Like, he used to. From what I understand, he used to have his chat up on his streams all the time. Like, you know, uh, like uh, his YouTube chat, so you could read the comments in real time on yeah. the screen. Um, he stopped doing that. I think in part because of um, one of the things we talked about during the uh, sit down where somebody had said um, that Mersh got really mad because somebody called his mom like a dead whore. <laughs> Something really. Yeah. Mean, right. Uh, but I, apparently people started like commenting that at him 
and so now he won't put his chat up because they keep spamming that. Uh, but um, yeah, like Marsh, uh, I I don't know that he's just. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the documentary. I, I have a lot of faith that Porcelain's probably going to put together something that's really entertaining. Oh, I was eagerly watching it. I mean, the little uh, slideshow that he pre presented to you was really well put together, I thought, even. Yeah, no, he put together, like, he, he hit all the high points. Like, I only knew, I, I didn't know, like, my Mersh lore, right? So I was learning it in real time. Uh, the fact that, like, he crashed his car <laughs> and then did another <laughs> fundraiser for another car right afterwards oh, was amazing. Shit. Sorry, guys, I fucking crashed that one. <laughs> Can I have more money, please? No, the, 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 the incredible part about all that is that, you know, he's incredibly arrogant and has a gigantic ego at this point in his life. Uh, and he really, really seems to think he's the shit. Right? It's kind of weird, isn't it? I mean, it's shocking to me. It's like, dude, you have, what, like 40,000 subscribers on the one channel, 15,000 on the other. Like, you're just some fucking dude on the Internet. Like, you th he thinks he's like a god or something. Yeah, I mean, I, I see uh, Twitch streamers and YouTubers uh, pulling like 40, 50, 60, 70,000 people on a stream, you know? Yeah. Um, you, you think that's the point, you start to get an ego. But he's like sitting at like a thousand viewers and he's getting really getting really high up on there and it's it's kind of funny. Yeah, and he's talking like, uh, if I see any of you trying to play patty cake over here and you're over on Jim's stream, donating, whatever the fuck, that weird like super villain voice he's talking in. It's like, dude, you need what? to check yourself. And then he's trying to be a tough guy, and he's like, seems like he's like fat, out of shape. It's like, what are we doing, Mersh? What I really loved about that too was, um, he tried to play it off and say, no, I was just joking. That was obviously a joke. But then he went on to a Ralph stream, uh, really drunk, and just was just super mad about that and everybody else. Like, you just uh, really, you could you could kind of feel the venom in his words, right? And it's like, that's yeah, not a joke. You're really mad. You're really mad if somebody buys a hat, Mersh. Yeah. No, he's like raging. That that whole thing was just mind blowing, like one after the other. Uh, I can't believe that that guy is <laughs> making all that money from this internet shit, and he's leaving this this like you know foot trail of just bullshit. Well, yeah, that's the weird thing. He bragged about making twenty grand a month, right? He's like, I make twenty thousand dollars a month, but then like every other day, he tweets about not being able to afford cat food. So mm -hmm. you're like, well, what's the reality here, man? <laughs> Which is it? Are you are you rolling in the money, or are you you struggling to buy cat uh, kitty litter? Yeah, the good old bait. Did did uh, Mersh ever say anything after that video? I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> did he go go on an anti gym tirade? Oh, he did. He did. I like because uh, I started at the beginning of all my streams. Every time I'd shell a hat, I'd always play the Mersh clip. Yeah. Uh, so he he yeah he, he he did a couple of streams where he bitched about it. Uh, but after the the porcelain sit down interview thing, because um, I think Mersh had told porcelain nobody's going to care. Nobody will watch your videos. There's no interest. You'll be lucky if you ever hit like twenty five thousand viewers, and um, that interview alone is like at one hundred and ten thousand, and the trailer for the documentary is at like forty. Yeah. So I think I think that freaked Marsh out because they're like, "Oh shit, people will watch this." I mean, when you when you act like that, I didn't know who he was, but within like fucking twenty minutes, I was enthralled. Yeah, now the car story was one of my favorites. I think again, just like the idea that he he smashes up his car and then asks for another one the next day, kind of thing, was pretty funny to me. Um, and then just, you know, just a lot of merch lore. It, it was pretty entertaining. So I'm sure, you know, he's got a lot more of that stuff for the documentary. Should be good stuff. Yeah, and buying the, the nice car and acting like it's like the shit, but it's some like fucking old ass hunk of sh metal. What, what oh, car was it? Oh, God, I don't even remember. It was it was some very specific um, 1980s, 1990s vehicle. <laughs> it's like one of those brands car. you don't hear about anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just like the fact, like, I, I like to imagine him sleeping on Royce's couch for 10 years and how much that must have pissed Royce's wife off. You know, like, after a couple years, how much, how neurotic she must have become because of this. Yeah, how did she allow it? So right wondering. at some point, she's got to be like, you got to get this guy the fuck out of here. Come on. Yeah, not going to, that's just not going to happen. I thought that merch, merch shit was great. Is there, a, is there any other, like, modern day shit that's going on that, what else is uh, crazy? There seems to be a lot happening at the moment, right? Yeah, so Acerthorn, right, um, is a guy that's uh, filing lawsuits and DMCA's against everybody. Um, from what I've seen, he's pretty unhinged. Uh, there are a lot of court cases and records out there of him doing crazy stuff. <laughs> from what I've seen, and it just fucking flashes oh, right. a clip of him with his clothes off. Well, yeah, there's that video. Sounds. Somebody, yeah, the turkey sound video, which is I I I woke my wife up laughing at like two in the morning because of that. Like I've, it's it's this obese man in a dungeon basement eating hot dogs, screaming uh, things, and making angry turkey noises. 
<laughs> as he walks around half naked. It was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. That's incredible. But like, he, he's going after people like with lawsuits and everything else, and his lawsuits are always insane. They're like for five trillion dollars, and he files them all uh, pro se, so he doesn't have a lawyer. Um, and like, he's going after the guy that just talked about this. Uh, is uh, uh, Alpha Sin or Omega Sin? I, I can't remember his username, but like he said, you're next. Basically, I'm going to sue you next. Um, so he's got like I think four or five lawsuits that are, are allegedly out there pending. I'm sure he's going to sue me now for even talking about it, and probably sue you for letting me talk about it. Oh, I'm a huge Acer Thorn fan. I, I I don't want to get sued. Please don't sue me. You're great at what you do. <laughs> keep, yeah, no, keep getting yeah. naked and making turkey noises. You reject. <laughs> oh, I I need to find that clip. I really want to play it on the monthly recap. I, I know it'll make him come after me, but it's so goddamn funny. I just can't help myself. Um, so there's the. Acer Thorn thing, there's the Destiny thing uh, that's going on right now with the uh, ratio uh, uh, troon that's threatening everybody to, uh, they're gonna uh, ratio activism everybody into the brink of destruction um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, like, kind of stuff like that that's out there um, that I usually kind of pay attention to because it's uh, crazy, uh, so I, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen with the Discord thing, if they're gonna find like pictures of uh, uh, cat boys and collars from this this person's Discord might we might end up with that. Who knows? What the Kefalus, however you say it? Yeah, Kerfuffle, whatever their name Kerfalis. is. Yeah. Apparently ran a, a Discord with a uh, uh, cat boy harem. Uh, and the uh, you know allegedly underage cat boys, uh, all wearing like property of collars. Mm. So some kind of weird kinky shit. Mm. You know, like we were talking earlier about like how do they get into it? Oh, it becomes more and more, you know, private you know, from the public website to, like, the private social media. So I'm sure that's kind of, like, a, a thing that went on there. Who knows? Oh, I mean, what is the state of the world where you can have this, uh, like, this m maniac m man that is transitioned to a woman, like, and she has all the power. She's taking everybody down <laughs> and, like, rampaging on Twitter. But it's working. Like, Destiny's down. She's literally ratioing everyone. everyone. It's like, you know, you always say clown world. It's like, what the fuck? The state of this website, you know? I, I know it's 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 bonkers again it, it's like that outgrowth right it started off as just you know teenagers writing about stupid shit on their their tumblr blogs but then they go through high school and college get jobs and now they're working at these companies and they're giving them the power to say these crazy things and ha you know be untouchable you know the blessed few that can do whatever they want and you can't do shit about it yeah it almost makes it worth like you know i'm fuck i'm switching up my whole persona i'm fucking whew, i'm on oh, their well, team I mean, <laughs> you know what i mean i want immunity you, you, you could you could make a lot of money yeah if, if you play ball right yeah yeah i i mean uh bread tube itself it, the money generation from that is just off the charts you know uh that kind of kind of woke more left-leaning thing uh you know if, if you wanted to be you know facetious about it you just didn't care and you just wanted to make bucks yeah that's the way to make money you become very rich doing that maybe that'll be the next avenue i go down <laughs> i look the part of it i look like a little bit of a yuppie hippie fucking uh you know, whack job. You can use this live stream and say, this is the moment I realized that people like Medicare were terrible. They're yeah. horrible people. And I just, I saw the light and please donate to my Patreon. He's a hateful monster. It, well, worked, I, for, it, it worked for H Bomber guy. He was a Medicare uh, member and now he makes what? 10, 20 grand on Patreon a month. Holy shit. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll take this moment. I'll just outright disavow you, Jim. I don't fuck with you. <laughs> I don't fuck with you at all. Content whack. Personality there you whack. Go. That's that's right. Yeah, it's just go away, Grandpa. Nobody wants your racism anymore. And for the record, any other shit that's bad or negative or perceived as uh, distasteful, I, I disavow that too. Fuck it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can hear the cash register ringing as we speak. <laughs> Whatever you guys want me to think, I think it. Just let me make my funny videos and uh, enjoy myself. There you go. Yeah. That's what that's what I always think. You know, you, you'll talk to people on the internet that. Uh, you know, you get deep into some of these forums. People are start to get gung ho and are like, "Let's make, let's take a stand." You're gonna let them do this to you. We gotta take a stand. We gotta make a difference. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, why don't you fucking take a stand, guy? All right. <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking say or do anything that's just gonna lead by yeah, lead by example. Why don't you, brave warrior, walk out in front of us holding the flag? Let's see how that happens. Yeah, you can be the the, the martyr for whatever uh, stupid uh, Asperger's -y cause you think is gonna make a difference. I'm, you know, not to be black pill, but. I kind of have the Sam Hyde thought about it all, like, you know, try to enjoy yourself and take care of your family and friends because shit's probably just going to get worse. Well, it worked out well for him and the fact that he could do a walled garden, right? So, like, he can still do, like, his content and still make money, and it's kind of walled off from, like, the effects of these people. Um, but even that, I think, like, as time goes on, they're going to find a way to try to, like, make that impossible. Take you know down I mean? Gumroad. 
uh, it'll be financial. That'll be the cudgel. Yeah, find some way of screwing with banks or payment processors to do something, which sucks because you know then then what? Then what's the next fucking step? Is everybody gonna be on tour? You know, <laughs> watching videos at one uh, kilobyte a second? Yeah. No, I think uh, shout out to Idubs for doing that documentary on Sam. I thought it was cool to see him get some like actual mainstream YouTuber attention. Uh, I liked that. Uh, you know. I thought it was funny that Sam put his, you know, part of that up first, and then Idubs puts his up, and yeah. it, it pretty much lined up. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, you know, taken out of context. It was pretty much just dead on what he said. No, that was great. I love that uh, Idubs just does not understand him, and like he wanted to make like a documentary about him, but ended up just being confused from the jump and never got past got past the confusion of like, is Sam serious? What does he mean? I, I love the start of Sam's video where he outlines they're doing like that PowerPoint of what they were going to do to Idubs to screw with him. They got the whiteboard. That was, yeah, that was so funny. God, that was funny. Yeah, I like all those guys, you know, uh, uh, Jet Neptune and fucking Big Flame and Wrecking Ball. I don't know if you're familiar with those guys. All, like, Sam's crew seems like pretty funny, cool dudes. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I think it's a sustainable model. He'll probably be around for a while, but, um, yeah, it's just, it just it sucks having to even talk about it like that. Like, how long is he going to be able to last, you know what I mean, like, until they start fucking with him? You know, because it feels like everybody's eventually going to get smacked around by this shit. Yeah, yeah, the blacklisted Desperado. I mean, they've already deleted him off everything, and he's kind of uh, came back. So, right now, YouTube seems to be letting him do his thing. So, he overpowered them. <laughs> it took they they, could, they just couldn't stop him. Yeah, and I, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure he did this thing where he like got people. I don't know if they do it for free or free pays him, or if he's even related to him. But like you know, these clip channels that are like clipping in a digestible manner his like paywall content. I think that's a pretty smart thing. Well, yeah, it gets the it gets the stuff out there. I, I think he's also just you know his his content's pretty popular, um, so there's always going to be like clipping channels that want to like try to get in on that. Um, and when you're but, so I mean, spread out, it's like you can't be erased. Like you know they try to erase yeah. you from the internet, but it's like how are they going to get down all the fucking hundreds of mirrors everywhere? Yeah, that stuff is everywhere, isn't it? I mean, yeah, and his stuff even more so. So I, you know, that's one way I guess of uh, persisting, but. Um, Starting fresh, yeah, it'd be tough these days. Yeah, and Porcelain did one of like the best kind of informational pieces about Million Dollar Extreme and Sam Hyde that I've ever seen. I think it's called The Blacklisted Desperado, I think. Or is it not called that? What the fuck's it called? It's on his channel. Uh, you know what I'm talking the, about? The, the, the last one, I, like some of this Porcelain stuff I watched uh, that I, I, I remember vividly is, and this got me to watch a bunch of other videos related to it, was the Owen Benjamin stuff. Yeah, that shit's great. Oh, the and then I started like watching it and like, I thought it was like, you know, people were exaggerating to a point. Uh, but then I was like, oh, no, he really is drinking turpentine and burning dinosaur books. Yeah, what <laughs> the like, fuck is that? <laughs> I was like, it's wild, man. But he seemed like a, a, you know, a kind of a smart, successful comedian. And then it's like devolving. I thought he was like, you know, I, I thought he was like maybe just a, you know, super conservative, outdoorsy kind of guy. But then, like, it's like drinking turpentine and talking about your aperture and goo juice and all this other <laughs> weird shit. Yeah, like, what and fuck? I laughed so hard, man, watching that stuff. He's in, he's like buddy buddy with Joe Rogan. The next thing you know, he's got he's like going on these incredibly inappropriate rants on Twitter. It's like, oh wait, has it someone told you this is unacceptable? What are yeah, you doing? Yeah. It's great. Though. I mean, he's a hoot. I, I think Owen Benjamin's really funny. Shout out to the uh, the Bears. I thought that was a gay thing, but apparently oh, <laughs> he thinks it's cool. I guess I don't know. I, mean, I, I can't I talk. E I I don't even know if they're still like I don't know if Owen even still streams at this point. I don't know. He could play the piano. He, you know, he's one hell of a piano player. Oh, I mean, I think he. Well, he's probably cashed out. I mean, he made a lot of money doing his his uh, uh, bear shtick. So I, I think he like built his compound in Montana or whatever the fuck it is, and like he's like, I'm done for the day. But yeah, the, the porcelain video is just called Sam Hyde uh, blacklisted. It's a really interesting because you know people like you or Sam Hyde that they've had their accounts deleted. It can be confusing retroactively trying to like figure out like you know the timeline or the story. It's like what the fuck happened to this person or who are they? You know. Yeah, especially with mine, because I've always had really shitty mic quality. So you're like, is this from 10 years ago, or is this from yesterday? Yeah, it's fascinating. And I don't I don't think there's a lot of, uh, I mean, not to fucking, oh, pat myself on the back, or fucking, oh, I'm so cool. I don't think there's a lot of people that have 140,000 subs that want to make a video uh, about these kinds of, you know, fringe, inter obviously inappropriate things. Like, you know, Mr. Medicare is not the, the guy that's going to get you in the good graces of uh, Suzanne. She's not going to be your best friend, no. No, but, you know, whatever. Fuck it. I, 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 I just feel so strongly against the whole, like, o overt censorship, and it's so fucked up that, you know, people like you or, or uh, Sam or even fucking Nick Fuentes. I'm not, the, I'm not a big Nick Fuentes fan, but I think it's really fucked up what's going on with all the censorship. 
Yeah, I mean, people, again, it just puts everybody in a situation of, you know, either you create your own walled garden, uh, you find an alternative that's going to last four months, or you, you have to play ball, really, you know? Um, and, uh, again, it kind of brings me back to that fire thing, because uh, another point that guy had mentioned uh, was, like, he was like, hey, I was a hippie, I was out there in the 60s on uh, college campuses, like, protesting against, like, um, uh, administration restricting our speech. And he's like, the thing that really fucked me up is once we won and all my left leaning friends grew up and took positions in the, uh, you know, universities, they, they stopped advocating for free speech and just for their speech. And he's like, it turned into this shit show where it, they just it was all, you know, like a, a charade, you know, and he felt really depressed about it. Um, and I, I, that's just kind of where we are. It's the it's you got to tell the line of the people in charge, I guess, until somebody comes up, maybe Elon will uh spend billions of dollars and make his own his own platform and let us all have fun who knows yeah i mean i feel like it can't be that hard to just have a platform people can say what they want i mean shit's always going to devolve and be negative i guess you have to have some kind of cap on speech at some point right i guess if you get into like what harming people and those kinds of things i I mean i think physically well yeah i mean i i think that you know it's a you know, it's the, the idea that if you're informed of what you're walking into, you're fine. You know, it'd be like somebody getting offended uh, going on to 4chan. You should expect to know what you're getting into, right? Or if you're you're signing up for SA back in the day, you would kind of know what you're getting into. Uh, so if, if somebody created a new platform that was very open and a free-for-all, I, I think that, you know, having a sign posted that says good luck... <laughs> Uh, should be enough uh, to give them an idea of kind of what they're getting into. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, there are always going to be some rules. I mean, you don't want people doing things that are blatantly illegal or horrible, but uh, for the most part, I think that um, just that old spirit of what it was would be nice to have back for a while. Yeah, like, you know, I have my own little shitty Discord that no one cares about, and it's, you know, writing the rules of, like, what's allowed, I'm pretty much just like, you know, don't do fucking weird porn shit and, like, you know... <laughs> Just, you know, try to, what do you want me to say? And it's hard. I don't want to ban people. Like, I have people that are like, oh, so-and-so is bullying me on your Discord. It's like, well, I don't fucking, can't you guys figure it out? Like, I don't want to have to ban somebody. See, I don't use Discord, so I don't even know how, how would you get bullied on Discord? Are they, are they DMing each other? Is that how that works? Or is it like a group chat or what? Yeah, you can join like a voice chat. So I have like the fucking Hyperborean Hangout or some shit, whatever the fuck it's called, the Slam Zone, some stupid shit. I don't know what it's called, but uh, you can go in there and just like talk like we're talking. And I guess oh, uh, people are mean in there sometimes. Oh well, then don't go into voice chat. Seems like the problem solved, huh? Yeah, that would have been my response. Well, if they're saying mean things in voice chat, don't go into that voice chat. Yeah, no, I just try to be like, hey guys, try not to, try not to be shitty. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be like, oh, you get banned. You made someone upset. You get banned. It is. A, it can be difficult trying to fucking figure it out. I typically have a hands off approach. What if you took What if you took the opposite approach and just surprise them? You know, subvert their expectations. And everybody that says they're a, a victim of. Uh, this intense bullying you just message them and say you're banned because you deserve it oh yeah if you're able to be bullied you get banned if you're that weak you deserve it yeah Yeah. well like that guy's that guy's an asshole you know what i made me laugh really hard the uh you tried to release merch that said bully the weak oh my god that lasted two days that is fucking a hysterical shirt i i liked it i liked it and um apparently yeah uh, teespring you can't use the word bully well, I mean, it's just like a hilarious fucking. Why can't Why can't you sell a shirt? I saw Sam or not Sam Hyde. Frank Hassel had a shirt that said like, "I'm schizophrenic and have a gun" or something like that. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I think there's it, when it's so outrageous and over the top. Obviously, right. I mean, bully the week. Come on. Like, what, what are, are you expecting? Like, there are army of people wearing this uh, marching down the street. No, it's a gig. You know, um, and the schizophrenic with a gun one would be too. But yeah, uh, uh, Teespring. It was very. They did not like that. <laughs> they did not like that product. Yeah, that's, that's that's great. So, I don't know how long we've been doing it. I haven't looked at chat or, or anything, but uh, should we read the small super chats? Sure. I don't know what to, what you want to do. Is there anything else? So, I don't know the, the timeline for when this video is going to be out. I have, like, a ton of fucking videos uh, backlogged, but um, is there anything else you think we should touch on just for a kind of a, uh, a layman's video essay on the, the history and lore of Mr. Medicare? Uh, I, I think the best like summary for it would be um, I was lucky enough to be able to enjoy the internet right kind of when web 2.0 hit and all these different uh, platforms came out where you could you know share videos and interact socially uh, and I enjoyed the freedom of that before it became really kind of authoritarian and jumping down your throat and I think it's kind of a pity that that's going away 
Um, and I guess that, you know, if you wanted to capstone what I've done online, it, you know, it almost lines up perfectly with it from that kind of almost absolute freedom until the end where we are kind of right now, where it's kind of almost going away totally. Um, and so that's that's what I would say. I, I would say the summary is I got lucky and was able to enjoy the internet for what it was while it lasted. Yeah, a, a true uh, internet veteran, Mr. Medicare. Uh, the last of a dying breed. I don't know how to say it without being too gay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded super gay. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. Like from the beginning, you've been very, very pro free speech. Very, you know, you're, you've stayed anonymous. You've kind of held. I tried to. Try, tried my best. Yeah. Okay. You've held, you've held true to a lot of the same values from the beginning, and you know you've exposed some pedophiles. I think you've done good. I think all in all, yeah, it's a chaotic good. Uh, well, Mr. well, yeah. I mean, it, it, again, it's just it's trying to enjoy the internet for what it was. Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, personally, I just I feel bad for kids growing up with it now. I, I think it's probably just uh, you know, there's entertainment to be found, but I, I don't think they'll get to enjoy it the same way um, I did or anybody in the last ten, twenty years did. Um, and I think they're you know missing out on that. I think it's a good experience. It kind of sucks that it's not there. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I was born in '95, so you were obviously a lot more sentient than me during some of the early internet days, but. Uh, you know, I think uh, I'm lucky enough to have experienced it as well. Um, imagine it, you know, you're born, if you're like 18 right now, it's like the internet is a completely different landscape than what it was oh, yeah. in 2013. I mean, when I'm 18. Yeah, radically different. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. But um, yeah, did I, uh, we're going to read some super chats, but I really appreciate you fucking taking the time to talk to me. This is really cool for me as a, as a fan of uh, you without, you know, trying to suck your dick too much. Um, no nah, man, I, I like doing live streams. My I tend to try to like go on when people ask me and stuff, uh, regardless of uh, if they're a fan or not. I mean, I, I did uh, one stream once with a dude that was like, uh, uh, <laughs> like a super communist. Um, it was it was really weird. Yeah, it was like a one of the only kind of political streams that I've done. But um, he had like a stutter and stuff, and it would have been easy to kind of, uh, I guess, dunk on him for that. But we ended up having like a fun conversation for like two hours. Yeah, you had you had you had some mercy, merciless, Mister Medica, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's my, again, my, the internet is made for. Um, it should be made for entertainment and uh, arguments. <laughs> That's uh, the two avenues that it should go. Yeah. No. I mean, it's good that that you're so uh, pro discourse. I feel like that that would help a lot. I don't think the world get, becomes a better place when certain political leanings are, are censored. And I wouldn't think it was good if they were, like, centering the left, you know, and all these leftist shit is getting, like, d deleted. I would be like, that sucks. They should be able to say their fucking shit, you know? No, yeah, I, I agree. And I, I don't want to see it, like, I don't want to see the pendulum swing that far back where it's just a reversal of what it is now, you know? I'd like it to be, like, kind of just the, down the middle, right? Let yeah. everybody have, have, their, have their say. Yeah, you can be a freak, I can laugh at it, and then we can both fucking go to sleep safe and sound in our beds at night, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, so... Um, so in your in your in your weakened health state, Jim, do you still drink alcohol or anything? Oh uh, no, I, I I don't drink. Um, that was one of the first things I stopped doing because I, I not a hundred percent certain exactly what's going on, so I just I had to stop. That makes sense. I was gonna say uh, let's do. A, I have a bottle of whiskey in my hand. I was gonna do a little toast, but we could do a uh, uh, you know a toast and spirit. Toast. Yeah, metaphor. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll take There's a sip Milton. of my soda. There we go. Holy shit. All right, I got the. Uh, chat up sure someone saying uh buckingham you did okay we forgive your stutters thank you guys i'm incredibly uh nervous thanks for understanding i'm having a meltdown <laughs> man alcohol tastes gross so um how the fuck do i pull up your super chats yeah um if you go to do this here uh, i i can tell you how i do it i know they've got multiple systems to do it but if you just go to your main youtube channel and then go you to click your little icon and go to youtube studio all right let me see something just for safety reasons oh yeah yeah you're probably not going to want to share this on stream by the way yeah so go to youtube uh, but, studio yep go to youtube studio on the left hand side you're going to scroll down past analytics comments all of that stuff down to monetization and then if you see supers there, if you click that, it'll show, it should show all your, your super chats. Wait, look at that. All right. 
All right, so we have uh, a few. I'll just get right into them. I guess you guys don't have to... Fuck it. I'll pull it up. Who cares? Mm -mm. All right. It's time. We have Autism Forums with a $5 dono saying, Jim, I would like to become a vampire. I think it'd be kind of cool. Any advice on how to go about that? Uh, well, I mean, I'd start by going to the blood bank and then just drinking as much as you can. You know, ask them for a bag or two. Um, don't don't ask for it to be tested because real vampires can just filter out STDs. And best of luck. <laughs> okay. Real vampires can filter out STDs? They can, yeah. No hepatitis, no AIDS, HIV. You're immune to it all. That's how you know you're a real vampire. But you got to drink a lot of blood to be sure. Those lucky bastards. Um, now we have Michael Alberto. I saw you did a stream with him. Shout out Michael Alberto. Yeah, uh, just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he donated a dollar ninety nine and said, "Ask about Jim eighty one Jim getting hacked." Oh, so uh, back in the day, right? Um, hey, this was uh, this is related to Haberman. We like to see he, you know, he was the admin, right? He owned Medicare. Um, <laughs> but like twenty four, I, I, if you ever heard the phrase twenty four hour ops or gay ops, was uh, a way of making uh, fun of Haberman because uh, he was very insistent about doing trolling schemes. And so because he owned the forum, we would screw with him. If he went on vacation, we would put up like a ticker that would put up his docs after the court case. Um, so one of the things I did was I faked a hacking on Jim81 Jim uh, with a group. Uh, what was it called? Not Entourage. Oh, my God. I can't. I'm blanking on the fucking name. Enclave. I think it was. Oh, are you there, man? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought meat cut out for a second. Um, so I set this up uh, where it was a fake hack on the channel. Right, but that wasn't the joke. The punchline was Haberman was so shitty at doing 24-hour ops that it would be obvious. Um, I think Latvi Man, when he did a stream with uh, uh, Short Fat Otaku, showed like the first half of it, but he never showed the the punchline, which was the channel then reverted over, <laughs> then reverted over to like a uh, essay that was uh, you know quote unquote written by Haberman about how you'd never see trolling ops like these on Busy Street, because um, uh, yeah, I should probably mention. When Haberman had a falling out with Jordan Haas, which was like a co-founder of the forum, uh, Haas went and made his own website called Busy Street. And um, <laughs> they had like a, a rivalry at that point. And so I, I made it try tried to make it look like Haberman was doing this uh, massive gay trolling op uh, to take uh, you know credit and show Jordan how real trolling was done. Uh, and so that that's the story behind that. <laughs> so it was kind of it was a, uh, a fake hacking orchestrated by you to fuck with Haberman? Yeah, I, we did that all the fucking time. Um, I, again, I mean, it, it, this is one of the reasons it sucks that all the screen caps are gone. Because, uh, yeah, like LMTE was a, a admin on the forum, too. So Haberman went on vacation once. One of the other things we did to him was we had a ticker, uh, like, you know, at the very top of the forum that had his address and phone number. So all the people that were pissed off that they were being made fun of on Medicare would show up on the website while he was gone on vacation. And it had his full docs ticking across. And then uh, he word filtered all this stuff that would just put out his full name and address. <laughs> so all the people that were guest posting were posting his docs without realizing it. He was a little upset about that, but I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was fun. That's some crazy like shit you're orchestrating just to have fun on the internet. Well, that, that, I mean, that was like a, a game is to kind of screw with each other as much as possible. And uh, I guess with all with these people, like in the in the midst of your Haberman interactions, it, are do you're maintaining the no friends, no internet friends policy, or at some point are you gonna you liking this dude, or was it upsetting when you guys stopped being boys, or you were just like fuck it? Oh well, I thought it sucked because, like I said, I mean he he was funny, right? Like the forum was fun to be on, and he was a funny guy when he wanted to be. Um, the, like the internet friends thing, I, I, again, I think people misunderstand that. It's not like you have to be abrasive or an asshole, but um, I think it's just. Maybe it's just the mentality of the era I grew up with the internet, right? That idea of anonymity. But, like, you, there's a separation for me between, you know, internet stuff and real life. And so I look at, like, you know, friends as people, like, I'd go to a barbecue with or, you know, you know somebody that I've known yeah. uh, where the internet is just, they're, they're acquaintances. That's not to say, like, it's a mean thing, but, yeah, we're not, it, we're acquaintances. We're not really friends here. Yeah, it's such an interesting perspective because so much of what I do on my channel is, like, traveling places and, like, you know, filming with people in real life, so... Yeah, you get out there, you meet them, yeah, have a beer, that kind of thing. It's a much different dynamic than, like, strictly, you know, over the internet, on forums, you know, it, debates over the web. Right, and, and it also comes down to you don't really know who you're interacting with, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
uh, that it goes back to like the kind of old school mentality of what the internet was. You have no idea who you're talking to. So the person that, you know, quote unquote is your friend may turn out to be a literal psychopath that you had no idea about. Brutalizing animals, molesting children, doing God Just, knows what. Yeah, doing crazy shit. Yeah. Um, making turkey sounds uh, half naked, but. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it's amazing, like, you know, I, I think about how I'm going to transition my channel, because all the constant traveling, it's like I'm on tour, you know, I always have to be in new places. You know, digging, digging into some of this internet lore would be a really fun uh, direction to take the channel in, because it seems like a, an undying well, there's so much content. Oh, yeah, you could make uh, thousands of videos. There's so much stuff out there that you could cover if you wanted to go just over different uh, events or people or, you know, instances that happened over the last 20 years. I mean, you, you'd have infinite amount of... Uh, subjects for videos. I mean, it's incredible there isn't, like, a proper, like, Frederick Newton-style video about, you know, your internet history. But to me, it's, I feel like it's deserving of a video. Uh, well, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, again, it really is just kind of laughing at furries <laughs> and talking about Tumblr. Um, but, yeah, I, I, you know, it, it, you're talking about kind of transitioning into talking about, like, internet lore and stuff like that. Um, I like those kind of videos. I mean, I watch that kind of stuff, like, you know, Frederick Knudsen, Internet Historian, um, people that kind of go over that kind of stuff. You know, even um, Dankula did, like, Mad Lads, where he talked about, uh, was it Drakenlord? Is the German guy? I'm not familiar. Oh, my God, that's a crazy fucking story. If you get a chance to, like, follow up on him, uh, like, this is a dude that became, like, um, I, I don't know, it's, I haven't even seen an example in the U.S. of something like this, where they'd show up to his house every day to screw with him, and he'd scream at them and throw rocks at them, and it reached a point where the city bought his house to get him to move away because he was causing such a disturbance. What? And, and so now he lives in a truck waiting to go to jail. Jesus. Wait, who is the dude in the desert in the tent that fucking hates you and he's pissing and shitting in a bucket? Oh my God, Wayne Lambright. Wayne Lambright, dude, I fuck with that guy heavy. Oh, that <laughs> dude, yeah, yeah. I, 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 again, see, that's the thing. Like when I talked about him on stream, I get to talk about it a little bit and show him talking about wanting to cut my head off with a spoon, but I can't like play the video of him pooping in buckets, <laughs> even though I'd love to. Man, there's got to be some fucking platform that can give me that content. That is fucking great. Yeah, I know, right? Well, why can't we see the shit, the shit bucket clip, Susan? Fuck, man. It, it's just yeah there's uh, what was it yeah it's him it's him on camera talking to people probably on discord and he's got a giant metal pail and he's just pissing in it butt naked and talking to people like it's you know like he's talking about the fucking weather of the sports game it's just surreal wayne lambright yeah i mean that like i feel like the internet like needs to know about these kind of people they're fucking hilarious and what the, the, I, the, the I whole the, the beginning of like um someone told him to eat a bag of dicks or something yeah, that, so that's the start of it, right? I wish that was more documented. I came across Wayne Lambright when uh, uh, an employee at, like, a Costco said he needed to suck a bag of dicks. And he just couldn't and handle it. He could not handle it. So he spent um, weeks making hour-long videos, uh, calling up the managers at the business, calling his state representatives, trying to get a hold of the FBI, uh, and talking about how being told to suck a bag of dicks was the most dramatic experience of his life. And, like, at that point, I was like, oh, this guy's going to be fun to watch. And here we are with him living in a shed in the desert, pissing in buckets. I mean, that's incredible. Part of me wishes that you had, like, a, a weekly window to everyone's life. And you had to, like, like, you could look into what the fuck everyone's doing every week. Just to see what they're doing, yeah. Yeah, imagine if, like, state mandated everyone had to fucking post a 10-minute YouTube video every week. All right, I'm dragging on. Terry Hesticles, my dear friend, uh, Mr. Terry Hesticles, donated $5 and said, Jim, do you remember Big Al? I always wondered what happened to that guy. Did he... Did he after reach out to you after you became well known? Did he reach out to you after you became well known? Uh, yeah, Big Al was uh, one of the people I, I remember from like earlier in the internet. Um, he was actually friends with uh, Chibi Mechodemics or Chibi Chibi Necodemics. I don't know how the fuck you say the guy's name, but um, I haven't talked to him in a while. But I mean, I, I did talk to him like a year or two ago, and he seems to be doing fine. Big Al, yeah, I guess uh, you did videos with that guy early on or some shit. Yeah, we did, like, a, a Sondra Lee cooking video. This chick who used to get shit-faced drunk and then make really awful cakes. Okay. All right, Charlie Greathouse donated $5 and said, When's the next Thailand vlog dropping, my Mayo Master? Uh, Thailand video should be coming this Monday or Thursday. I'm sorry for the, the drought. I'm on, like, a severe content drought right now. I haven't uploaded in, like, six weeks, which 
you know. It's getting over the hangover from Thailand? <laughs> well, then I got a terrible eye infection, like a genuinely unfunny, horrible eye infection where uh, my vision was, like, incredibly blurry for, like, three weeks, and it was just, it sucked thick. <laughs> See, there are a lot of jokes I want to make about who you could have got that eye infection and what might have led to it, but I don't want to get your channel pegged. No, everyone, everyone was like, you're, you're, well, you're going down on fucking trannies, or you know, you're having trannies bust in your face, you're eating out nasty <laughs> prostitute pussy. It wasn't the case. That's not the case. Literally. I I was training Muay Thai, there was a, a breakout at my gym, and then like I had sex with this street prostitute in Patia, and then I woke up the next day and had pink eye and was like, maybe it's chlamydia in my eyes, but then I got blood tested and I didn't have chlamydia or urine tested, whatever it was, Jim, and I'm fine, okay? So don't worry about it. Is that good? I think they're satisfied, yeah. All right. Um, your boy Yeti said, Jim, where can I find your video on Hampshire? Uh, that should be up on BitChute. If you just look up uh, Mr. Medicare on BitChute, or if you just look up Hampshire on YouTube, I'm sure there's probably, like, a, a copy, a mirror. Um, Kill All Pedo said, Jim, where can we find a copy of your Super Punch-Out LP? Sounds like it was well-received, but it's gone. Had to make a forensic reconstruction. Uh, it's it, it's dead in the water and gone. Uh, like, I'll just sum it up for you. It was just uh, me talking as a ring announcer over uh, boxing footage. It's not really that great. <laughs> it's about all it was. And it's lost in the sands of time? Uh, it's one of those ones. It's gone forever. What a shame. Grim Kaiser donated $20 and said, Talk about the lead-up and fallout of Jim's worst contribution to the internet, IBS Apocalypse. Uh, that was just... That was about 20 different groups of people that ran different fucking streaming shows uh, that kept uh, pestering me because they wanted to argue with each other. Uh, so I was like, fine. You know, I'll be neutral ground and let you all argue with each other. Uh, and then it was a seven hour, a six hour, seven hour stream, and it was just so fucking awful. Um, and I had the worst migraine after that shit show. It was just an internet blood sport, like, just feud on. It, it was like everybody wanted to, like, rip each other apart because I, I don't know, man. It was so, there were so many stupid, they were so angry at each other about uh, just all sorts of shit. And it was like, uh, it was, it was Tonka Saw, Failure, Andy Worski, uh, Ralph was there, Zoom, uh, Diogenes. Uh, and Kapistan, I think like two other people, and they all had different shows they did. They all did different streaming stuff. They all had issues with each other. And it was just a nonstop screaming match between all these people for like six hours. And uh, that was just that. I, that's be careful what you wish for or agree to, I guess. I, I should have uh, I should have reconsidered that because, uh, yeah, my head was just throbbing at the end of that fucking thing. And this is going to come off as like kind of a stupid, uninformed question, but I never, I never knew through all the IBS stuff. Like, who the fuck is Tonka Saw? Like, did he have a channel? Like, where was that guy? <clears throat> um, so uh, the the IBS stuff grew out of. Uh, uh, do you know who Kraut and T is? Yeah, I know. Like K R A U T. You have a, you have a video, or is, is it K R O U T? Uh, you did a video about the fucking dude. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, essentially, it grew out of that. So like the Kraut and T thing happened. Uh, this convention thing happened. And then Andy Worski started doing streams, kind of uh, uh, talking about stuff. And then uh, there was another guy named Tonkasa who did the show called The Morning Kumite, which was like, uh, you know, he'd, he'd do a stream in the morning. That's all it was, Morning Kumite. Um, so Worski and Tonka started streaming. And that was kind of like the start of, like, IBS. But so you'd have, like, Andy Worski and JF Gearby uh, doing, like, a stream at night. And then you'd have uh, Tonkasa and Failure doing it in the morning. And they'd both bring in about the same amount of numbers. So you'd have Andy bringing in, like, 5,000 viewers. And you'd have Tonka bringing in, like, Two to five thousand in the morning, um, and then eventually they had a falling out that you know they were going to box each other, and uh, Tonka saw like signed a fake name to the the documents to get out of it. It was going to be an MMA match, like the whole IBS thing was a a hell of a story in and of itself. Like the whole arc of that. Yeah, like I remember uh, in one of your videos you talk about Tonka saw he like bailed and like what Worski actually like trained and showed up to the. Event. Yeah, Worski, Worski did the blood work, signed the paperwork, trained, uh, flew out, paid for his hotel room, showed up at the MMA event, and then Tonka Saw was a no-show. And then the organizers had stated that the reason Tonka Saw wasn't there was he had given a false name and wouldn't give them the real information to sign the contract. And they're like, we're a real legitimate business. We can't, you know, we have to have this for legalities, right? Um, and so he didn't show up, so Andy was allowed to go in the uh, the ring and basically gloat for like 10 minutes to make fun of Tonka. That's why he comes out in a wheelchair, because there was a, a meme, a joke, that Tonka couldn't walk. I mean, it was not true, but he did it to make fun of him. He wore a little headdress and everything else. 
Yeah, that's, uh, I was never, because I watched your videos about it, but I, I, I never saw any morning Kumite streams or, like, put together yeah, who the fuck is Tonka Saw. Yeah, a lot of those are gone for good. Um, I, there are a couple people that have, like, archives, but, like, he streamed for, I'd say, a year and a half straight every morning uh, and made a, a ridiculous amount of money doing it. Holy shit. So that was a, that was a dude that came out uh, from, you know, going from, like, 20 people watching his stream to 5,000 watching it and making a, a ridiculous amount of money back down to 20 in the span of, like, a year and a half. My God. Yeah, having having five thousand live viewers is fucking incre incredible. Yeah, and it was consistent. So like they'd play off each other. You know, Andy would be in the evening, talk in the morning. They'd have you know crossovers. Andy would come on as a guest. They'd talk about the same things, and then yeah, they had their big falling out and led to a attempted MMA match. That uh, yeah, Tonka saw bluffed on. Yeah, I think you did a video called like Tonka saw Internet uh, Tough Guy Tough or some guy. shit. Yeah, 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 where he's all blustered. Yeah. Yeah, no, that shit is really funny. But if you type in, like, Tonka Saw, it's hard to fucking piece that together at this point. Yeah, because he, he renamed his channel, like, five times to screw up the algorithm, so you can't find him. Like, I think it's Tonky Talk Radio he does now. I, I don't know, but it's, like, ten mm. people watching. That really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Tonky Talk Radio. All right, we have uh, VHS Paradise donating $5 and saying, Ask Jim if he knows about James Bear and what he did to his nine-year-old sis when he was 13. I would elaborate, but YouTube won't let me. This is my fourth try. James uh, Bear or Beard? Uh, James B-E-A-R. It could be Beard, and you might have misspelled it. James Beard, James Beard. I actually don't know who that is. <clears throat> let me look up. James uh, Beard. Let's see if I can... Um... VHS Paradise, are you the guy that made the Buckingham Show VHSs? I, want, I think it is. I'm not looking at chat, so I don't know why I'm fucking asking. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I'm not. Uh, I, I don't know. He's not familiar. Um, Unfamiliar. Ace, Ace Presents, uh, shout out Riley. He's the producer for the Dick Masterson Show. Um, Ace Presents said, this is a much-needed stream. we got to appreciate this while we have it. I love both of you. Genuinely have a good night. Thank you, Riley. I appreciate that. Terry Hesticles with another $5. Another super, set, super chat just to say thanks to Jim for coming on. I've given you enough super berries. I've given you enough super berries to your stream, so here's five for Brandon. Thank you, Terry. It's very sweet. Oh, I got, you got somebody in your general chat giving a little bit of a background. Uh, when, when, they, when you put it like that, do you mean, are you saying he murdered her? Let me pull my, my shit up. <laughs> okay, well, if there's a video up on March 11th, 2022, um, that's a it's a edited title that says James Bear effed his sister. Holy shit! Uh, that's got 115,000 views. So I guess that's who we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. I'll, I'll go watch the video afterwards. Yeah, I'll have to look that. James Bear is a YouTube animator that ro roped his little sister. Jesus Christ. Yeah, when I when I read that, I thought, oh, do you mean like 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 you know, tied a noose around her or something? But no, I guess it means something different. Um, Bromedy Blank, I'll let you s skip the super chat line. He gave two dollars and said, "I have knee gears in my leg." Should I know what that means? I, no, I'm not sure. I guess well, it'll be a mystery. Mm. All right. Um, Tux loves you. Gave five dollars. Wait, no. Ace presents. Riley again gave five dollars and said, "Brad Carter is the phone losers of America, and he is the OG internet prank caller, and he is still as great as ever." Top ten internet creators. Cactus. Is that? Uh, do we know what that means, Jim? Uh, no, I'm. I'm actually uh, just kind of. I'm looking at the James Bear thing now. Now I'm curious because I've never heard of this guy before. Oh, we got a rabbit hole. I'll look it up. We'll see. It seems that uh, this happened like a week or two ago because uh, there are uh, results from everywhere. Yeah, YouTube videos, Reddit posts. James Bear. Are James Bear animator and sister allegations true? What, he's a, he's a young YouTube, 22-year-old YouTube guy? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what they're they're showing. Oh, he's one of these fucking dudes. Odd one is out type guys. Does he do like, <clears throat> like flash animation or, I mean, it kind of looks like it. Yeah. Cal Arts a little bit. He was having intercourse with his nine-year-old sister at the age of 13. James details that the events took place in 2013 were the result of him suffering from depression from harassment. Stop being mean to me or I'm going to keep raping my sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I don't think I've ever heard that defense before. Is that really what he went with? Apparently, yeah. 
If you keep being mean to me, I'm going to rape her again, okay? <laughs> Don't you feel bad? This is your fault. Yeah, that is crazy. I'm just sad, okay? And I'm tired of beating off, and she's right there across the hall. That's <laughs> crazy. No, this dude has fucking, like, 300,000 subs or something. That's insane, though. He how, how did this How did this come to, like, how did they find out? Did he just suddenly admit, hey, guys, by the way, I was raping my sister for a few years there? Uh, I guess someone posted screenshots. Uh, Lalo does art exposed James with through screenshots, where I guess he, you know, in Chris Chan fashion, admitted to doing these heinous things. Why would he ever? What would compel somebody? You said he had how many? Like three hundred thousand subs. Three hundred k. So you know he's got to be making like all right money. So he's he's popular. He's making money, and he decides, hey, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to go on social media and tell people I've been raping my sister. Let's see how that plays out. Maybe he thought he would get sympathy if he's talking about, oh, I was so depressed and was getting harassed so much. Oh, my God. Could you imagine how delusional you'd have to be to think that, like, yeah, they're going to they're gonna totally feel bad about my, you know, uh, <laughs> my depression making me a pedophile. Yeah, forget if she was asking for it or not. I was sad, okay? And you guys were mean, so. You guys have been, you're being terrible here. I, don't you understand how upset I've been? <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess we, we, we cracked that case. All right. Um, Tux loves you gave $5 and said, still working on the Gunt game, Jimbo. Also, thanks for the awesome Chud Bud hoodie. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that Gunt game is funny as shit. I don't know if you've seen it. He was making a mod of uh, Mario 64, uh, all featuring Ethan Ralph stuff. Uh, really good. Yeah, I think I heard <laughs> you talk about it on one of your last things. Yeah, I saw Flamenco do like a Let's Play of it, uh, one of the early builds of it. Uh, this Lomenko guy, he's someone I'm not that familiar with. Does he have a, uh, he's a, he's a YouTuber? Oh, uh, yeah, he was just the former co-host of, uh, Ralph's on the Kill Stream, and then went off to kind of do his own thing. I think he mostly streams with people like, uh, uh, Augie, or, or RFC, uh, people like that, who also are, like, their own kind of, like, group of, uh, streamers. Oh, he's streaming right now, a deep dive into Keffels, the person claiming to have gotten Destiny banned. Alice exposes Ralph, he's live. I'll give him a sub, I'll check him out, I'm not familiar. Yeah, I'm sure Keffels will probably be, or Kerfuffle or whatever, will probably be uh, a hot topic for a while. Yeah, shout out that uh, fine young woman. <clears throat> Walter Deadman with the 499. Jim, did you hear about Ralph losing money on bets related to Japanese baseball? Heard something related to that on Kino Casino last night. Uh, yeah, well, I, I've, I've heard that before. Something about Japanese baseball and Taiwanese tennis, which I don't even know if Taiwanese tennis is a thing or if it's just the alliteration made somebody laugh, but... Um, I don't know why you'd be betting on obscure stuff like that unless, like, you're the world's biggest Japanese baseball fan. Yeah, what? Yeah, I don't, that's, that seems ridiculous to me. Taiwanese tennis? Like, that's a serious thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have no idea. What a fucking reach. Skeeter's Funhouse. I like that username. That's good. Skeeter's Funhouse gave $5 and said, congrats on having Jim. Good banana. Thank you. It's very nice of you. Um, Bromedy Blank donated two dollars and said keffels privated their twitter oh did they no way did they really yeah is that true let me check my phone ah uh, these are lies i'm looking at it right now really uh looks open to me probably blank what the hell man unless unless they have multiple twitter accounts i know they've got like 20 accounts so maybe it's a different one than the main one yeah, she tweeted an hour ago, you cannot seriously be calling me subhuman while also trying to say you don't hate trans people. I wonder who they're arguing with. I don't know, but I mean, I'll say it. Keffels, listen, I don't hate trans people. I think you're fucking subhuman. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? Oh, you're going to get ratioed so hard, man. Oh, man. Uh, well, you know, my incredible Twitter following, uh, it's going to be hard to out-ratio my 2,800 followers. So uh, I'll pray for you. <laughs> my God! Give me some moral support. My God, Keffels, please don't. Um, and then what I think might be the last donation is Walter Deadman just changed bully to crush. That might work. I guess he's talking about the bully the week shirt. Crush the week. <laughs> <laughs> sounds even meaner to be honest. Oh, that's great. Um, and I guess is that about it? No, we have more from that are not loaded. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it'll do that sometimes. Sorry for me being a, a, a rookie streamer. I don't stream very often. That's why. Um, fuck, dude. Where did I leave off? All right. Brandon Buckingham donated two dollars. I guess someone made a, that account. Advice for someone looking to become a teacher. 
Uh, it's one ninety nine. My advice for someone looking to become a teacher is don't. Yeah, <laughs> fuck, dude. Try not to. No, uh, I mean, know what you're getting into for sure. Don't don't come in with a uh, uh, warped perception that you're gonna like change this system and help all these kids. You know, you might be in a shitty situation where you can't help very much. Um, yeah, just do research about where you live, the county you're teaching in. Like, you know, if I taught in the county I grew up in, Carroll County, it would have been a lot different experience than if I taught in Montgomery County, Maryland. So, like, you know, look up your uh, county's rules and shit because it, it could be on some bullshit. I don't know. What, what fucking advice can you give? Um, don't, try to save the, don't try to save the day. You know, you're just a fucking uh, cog in the wheel and, you know, follow instructions and get in line. That's my advice, right? My, uh, my advice would be what I said earlier. I, I would seriously job shadow on your own time if you can work it out. Just spend a week watching what it's really like uh, to get an idea if you really want to commit four years at minimum to getting a degree for it. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you might hate it. And you might, like, you know, have this perception like you're going to make this grand impact. And then it just all falls through your fingers and you're fucking like, damn, I just wasted $100,000 in six years of my life. Right. Um, so be really sure you want to do it. Uh, cause, and I, I don't know how uh, much an education degree is, like, valuable in other fields, but I can't imagine it, it's that valuable. I'm sure you can be, like, a salesman of some sort after being a teacher. but Right. Well, you, I mean, usually they parlay it, right? So you'll, you'll extend it out into a master's, you know, and then you'll write uh, materials to sell to other educators. That's the money game. Yeah, that seems like a bit of a multi-level marketing scheme, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Go to school to learn this stuff so you can sell it to other people that are going to school to learn this stuff. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Fuck it. If I should be becoming a teacher, good luck. Uh, have fun. I don't fucking know. It's probably going to suck. Or it might be awesome and you might love it. Um, Polyfrog64. Oh, go to community college. How about that? That's good advice. Save money and go to community college if you don't have a scholarship, right? Yeah, get an associate's. And then you can figure out what you want to do. Yeah, it's much cheaper. And it's you a, get you, everything front-loaded, so you can just go right into your specialty. Yeah, it's a huge waste of time to, to go in and fucking do general ed at an, at an expensive university and throw away all that money. Um, yeah, also, that's actually good. Also, my advice for someone that's in college is, like, pursue your passions while you're in college, because when you're out of college and you're spent into the workforce, I mean, you're going to be a total fucking loser trying to do uh, make beats on your mom's couch at 25 years old with your bachelor's degree. You know? So, like, I think if you're in college, you should pursue some kind of passion if you think you might want to do that. Like, I think college is your time to, like, you know, try that out while you're doing your studies. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I, I'd agree. I mean, I, I kind of think that, like, that is the um, one of those moments where you kind of get to decide, you know, what is the next 40 years of my life going to look like? So, yeah, explore those options. Yeah, because, I mean, I could have started YouTube shit when I was in college and saved me a lot of time and money. Uh, I don't think going to college for six years, becoming a teacher, and then quitting to do YouTube is, like, a smart uh, career trajectory. It's a, a lot of wasted time and money. Paul, no, but you could use you could use your education, you could use your degree now to write a book for other educators called How I Got Into YouTube and Make Some Real Money. I'm going to start selling courses, YouTube courses. Oh, my God, do it. They'd probably buy it from you. How can I use YouTube in my classroom? Well, I'm an expert. Look at my sub count. Yeah, look at this. 140. I'm a big deal. Uh, in fact, I drive a 2013 Prius. I look so good riding in that Prius. <laughs> you fucking... You guys are all jealous. You fuckers. I, I like merch. I should have a conversation with merch. That would be fun. Oh, it would be entertaining. I'd like to talk to him. I want him, I want him to give me his pitch on why he thinks he's uh, such a hot shot. Have him raging out on me. I, I think it would hear, be really funny to have someone just fucking yelling at you on stream, going crazy. Oh yeah, it's it's a trip. It's fun stuff. My God, um, Polyfrog sixty four donated ten dollars and said Odyssey lets you get away with and post a lot of stuff, including putting Israel on blast. I've been trying to tell you, man, Odyssey is lit. That's what Polyfrog sixty four said. Yeah, I, I tried a lot of different like uh, alternative things, and some of them were very good. But they always seem to kind of go away after a while. Like I did VidMe, I did StreamMe, I tried DLive, I tried, uh, oh my god, I can't even remember half the name of these things. Uh, but like every time I get comfortable and start to enjoy myself, like there'd be a financial issue or uh, some kind of problem in uh, corporate, or there'd be some kind of new law or legislation passed uh, that just kind of kneecapped it. So I'm not super enthusiastic. But if it works for now, that's great. I'm glad people can use it and put up whatever they want to put up. Yeah. I mean, we're glossing over this, but, uh, you know, I, I caught this nasty, heinous, anti-Semitic attack. He's insinuating we want to put Israel on blast, Jim. And for me, that's just, 
Let's... Well, I love I love Israel and the Jews. They're our greatest ally, and I will not let anyone say otherwise. On blast, Polyfrog. That's, that's sickening, you anti-Semite. Terrible. What the fuck? I mean, are they, they're what, they're the most homophobic place in the West, or whatever they say about them. You know what? Fuck. Well, I I need to disavow this for when I switch over to BreadTube, so I can make that Patreon money later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I I don't want to put them on blast. I want to put them up my ass. You know what I'm saying, Suzanne Biden style. All right, Polyfrog sixty four said for five dollars. Looking forward to the March Madness stream, Jim. I'm sure it's going to be hilarious. We had Alice tell tell us all about Baked Alaska and Ralph. Uh, yeah. So I started watching that. Um, like uh, I, I, the, the, there were some dark allegations in there, um, but I, the the thing that I think I, I almost want to have this painted so I can hang it on the wall is her describing him with his legs in the air masturbating while she cries in the corner eating noodles. What? Like that that mental image of a woman talking about a man masturbating on the bed with his legs in the air while she sobs eating noodles. Like that's that needs to be painted. That needs to be printed <laughs> onto a poster so I can hang that on a fucking wall. Who is this Alice character? Uh, IP2 streamer, so kind of like an outgrowth of Ice Poseidon and his whole... Uh, yeah, group. why I'm on fucking IP2. How the fuck do you get on there? They just put you on there? Uh, I guess, yeah, if you're if you're uh, associated with the other IP2 streamers. No, but I'm literally completely not associated. They threw you on there then to fuck with you, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I guess because I'm she, edgy, right? I'm inappropriate. Great. She she would she would go on to all the streams with all the different you know streamers, and part of that was like Baked Alaska and Yoba... Um, and she related a story last night on uh, Aquino Casino, which is what PPP and Andy Worski host, uh, about Baked Alaska masturbating on the bed with his legs in the air while she ate noodles crying in the corner naked. <laughs> Sounds like a great mate. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, I just, I need a poster of it. I'm just, I, there are talented artists out there. Somebody needs to draw this. Yeah, someone make it, and then uh, Jim will do a merch drop with the fucking <laughs> a Tale of Love. <laughs> The noodle masturbation incident. Um, yeah, what the fuck's going on with Baked Alaska? I was at the January 6th uh, storming of the Capitol when he fucking went inside the building. I, I don't know. So, like, he his uh, content uh, spray where he maced some guy, like, he got 30 days, but I think they're trying to appeal it. And then he's got the January 6th thing where I, I heard that he, like, turned over evidence uh, about it. He um, snitched? So I don't, uh, that's, that's the rumor. So I don't know exactly what's going on with him, but... Um, you know, Alice had said something last night that uh, Nick Fuentes had advised Baked Alaska to flee the country uh, and go to Russia to avoid being prosecuted. Oh, shit. So if Nick Fuentes told Baked Alaska that in private, in, you know, like text messages or SMS, and Baked Alaska has now turned all of, her, all of this to the January 6th uh, committee, um, he might have just fucked over Nick. Mm. So That's... good job. Good job, Yoba. <laughs> Let's see how that plays out. Yeah, it's crazy. I never understood because, you know, I, I was at the January 6th thing all day. Um, I was there, like, on the the, um, the stairs of the Capitol building. You know, I was there for the whole thing. I filmed the episode, whatever, whatever. Like, why the fuck did Baked Alaska and Nick Fuentes enter the building? Like, I, I Well, didn't Nick, that. now, now from what I understand, Nick never went in. Nick didn't go uh, in. Okay. Yeah, no, Baked, Baked went in, from what I understand. Uh, now, if you were there, did you happen to did baked at any time? Uh, put his legs in the air and start masturbating. Oh, there was any of yeah, there was some dudes talking about uh, you know Alaska and shit. And he was beating off everywhere, but I, I didn't think he was an internet <laughs> personality. I thought that was just a homeless guy. And there's a lot of those in DC. Just doing what he needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean that was crazy because he he's been off the internet since then, right? Uh, no, he streams all the time. He had like baked an Alaska's RV back. Yeah, he, he has a uh, he tried to do an RV stream where he spent like twenty grand on a broken RV and now he's so poor he can't buy groceries. I guess. Oh man. Uh, if things aren't going well for him, Maybe. I guess would be the best way to sum it up. Yeah, it sounds like everything's gone to shit town for baked. Maybe he should go get a job at uh, Buzzfeed again or whatever the wherever the fuck he was working. I know it's remarkable, really, when you think about his uh, journey politically and just uh, uh, it's been back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, I don't, I don't trust that guy. But yeah, did after, I, I don't either. After being at the fucking January, the storm of the Capitol thing, it's like, how could you think it was a good idea to enter the building? There's cops everywhere. You know, I saw a dude get shot in the face with a fucking plastic bu uh, bullet thing. It was like in his mouth, hit a hole in his face. I don't know. I never yeah. understood that. Yeah, I, I don't know what Baked was thinking. Um, but like he, I, I like because like right after that, he went on was streaming doing dumb shit where he'd spray people with pepper spray and. Um, scream at people about masks and shit and get in store, you know, like go in stores and start shit. Um, so it, it seemed like he didn't care. Like he was like, ah, oh, nothing's going to happen. But um, if the rumor, you know, if what Alice is saying is true, who knows? And uh, if the other rumors about him turning over evidence, I, I don't fucking know. 
It sounds like a clusterfuck, Matt. Yeah, it sounds like a disaster. Um, and it, listen, I love a good prank. I think harassing someone publicly until they're upset enough to warrant you pepper spraying them. I think that's a great <laughs> prank. <laughs> I want. I wonder what would happen with the like. Uh, they had a clip of baked Alaska eating. Like they were so poor, they couldn't even get like a butane burner for their RV trip. So they're just eating uh, beefaroni out of the can raw. Uh, at what point are you gonna just give it up and just go get a regular job, or like, or at least do DoorDash? I mean. Is content that fun and easy that you want to fucking... Well, uh, what I don't get is, from what I understand, his parents are uh, fairly wealthy, so it's not like he even really needs to do this. So I don't know what the like the impetus is for him to keep trying. He just likes being an e-celeb? He likes the attention? I, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, I think the stress is getting to him. He's put on like 100 pounds. He went from a, a pretty svelte guy to like, he, he's pretty fat right now. I think all the stress of the shit going on right now is getting to him. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I, th I I figured he was like f fucked or in jail. I didn't know he was streaming. I'm gonna have to check out a baked Alaska stream. If you check out some of the yeah sh some of the clips, yeah, it's just it's very sad. Yeah, it's like all his money went to a broken RV. He's fat. He's sad. Alice is telling people about his masturbation habits. It's just like going badly for him. I mean, I, I think like you know it's ironic coming from me, but I think being like an influencer, being a social media guy, is like kind of uh, it's not a good thing to be. I think it's like a poisonous thing to engage I, in I, I i think it is too yeah i i you know I, if you can make money online fine but like uh, don't don't start huffing your own farts and thinking that um you're the leader of the next great thing i i, I hate the term influencer too i mean it's such yeah. a weird term in and of itself and what it denotes yeah and i'm not i get it i'm, I'm a long-haired mustache dude with the cool jeff gordon jacket but um i don't i don't think uh, all these people crying for internet attention or or having this terrible online persona and then like continually doing it not just going and getting a real job or changing their life i think that's pretty ridiculous like you know only use me blade you're familiar with that guy yeah yeah now he was in our, our our rv trip too i think it was gucci's wasn't it where she was like drunk in the back and he went back there and there was the whole fucking thing with that yeah that was very weird and like yeah he's drank so much he's he's Guy has like diabetes holes in his leg, and he's I don't know. It's just sad, dude. Yeah, his his foot is yeah his foot is rotting off. It's just surreal. And this asshole he's with. There's this one clip where this asshole he's with is like pouring liquor on his open wound because it's like funny for the stream. It's like, dude, that's a guy. Uh, there, that he should adopt your no internet friends. Fucking. Oh well, there's the awesome. other guy too that uh, put hot sauce in one of his open wounds on his festering leg and then licked it out. Yeah, those are the kind of people I want around me. Oh fuck, man. Oh. Mm. Well, at least I'm an e -celeb. I'm cool. Great. Um, Alexi Time donated $20 and said, Hey, Jim, you fell off my radar. Glad to hear you again. What do you think of Destiny's ban? Uh, from Twitch? I think it's stupid. I, he li he literally was so banal. It was so just mundane, right? There was no, It wasn't vicious. I, I think Twitch has become so, like, like, what can you do on Twitch anymore? Uh, we couldn't. We couldn't have this conversation. We already have said enough nasty words. Oh, we would have been banned within five minutes. Yeah. yeah, it's not even. It's not even political stuff. It's like anything. If you make a joke, if you say anything wrong, it's like. Yeah, I think if you, it, if you say like uh, simp or retard or any of these words that are like, not even the most nasty words. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, I would hate to be. I'd hate to be one of the guys that like built my career on Twitch and's got like two hundred thousand subs and dealing with what it's like now must be just fucking nightmarish. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'd rather, rather than like completely conform and become this like shell of who I am, which is like what I avo I wanted to avoid by quitting being a teacher. Like I'd rather just have my all my shit go up in flames and then go back into the workforce. You know what I mean? Rather than really hold on to this internet thing for too long. You know? Yeah. Fucking it seems like a disaster. Um, Jim, seriously, how did your day go? And what did you do today? You really helped in great times of deep depression. Thank you, Jim, for all the amounts of great content. That's from Sweetie Squad, ten dollars. Very, very nice, very sweet. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I've been watching uh, Kerfuffle and Destiny go back and forth, and watching as like twenty other people get sucked into this thing as uh, they go mad with moderate power about their bot army ratio. I mean, I, I I do agree with Keemstar and others. Like that's it's so inorganic the amount of likes you know to do this uh, ratio shit they're doing. And um, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, they're running bots. But uh, it's just been, I've watched that all day. It's It's been entertaining to watch. Yeah, it seems like there's a fascinating little situation going on there. Whoever the fuck Ker Ker Kerfels is, Keffels. I've never never heard of that fucking uh, that bitch until today. Or that nice woman, beautiful woman, whatever. Invader Vim <laughs> gave $5 and said, has Null come up yet? I got here late. 
the no no uh it's the owner of kiwi farms okay yeah so i'm familiar with kiwi farms i know it's like uh, a forum of sorts they love sam hyde they typically it's like encyclopedia dramatica right like they'll give you information about stuff with like you know their own little spin on it yeah so i mean yeah you had stuff like uh essay or uh yeah encyclopedia dramatica um the hell even neogaf for a while before it kind of got super stringent you know stuff like that and then uh, kiwi farms is uh the place that you'd go now to get screen caps and talk about stuff that you can't talk about anywhere else um i i guess they're bringing up uh null because uh ralph is engaged in a blood feud with him so maybe because we talked about ralph i don't know wait currently there's, there's so much fucking shit going on it's in, it's incredible oh uh, well, well ralph hates null um <laughs> so they've got like a blood feud going on and why does ralph why does ralph hate null because null was talking shit about him uh, well, my, this is my understanding. Null, about a year and a half or two years ago, made some comment essentially saying Ralph needed to be sacrificed to the corn for the good of everybody. <laughs> um, and Ralph, like, lost his shit. And now it's been, a, a, like, internet warfare between the two of them uh, for, like, a year and a half. Well, that was the first blood. That was the, the striking point. One corn joke, yeah. Who would have thought so much, so much uh, turmoil could come from one comment like that? Uh, Knight or Nye gave ten dollars and said, "Hey Jim, Pipkin Pippa wants on. Also, is there an ETA on Bully the Week coming back?" Uh, I, I'm trying to uh, use a different source to see what I can put up as far as merchandise. Uh, I'll see how it goes. I, I, I liked it. I thought it was funny. Uh, I'll see if I can figure it out. Who knows? Uh, when is the March recap? Jimbo says, "Epic Yoshi for two dollars." Uh, end of the month, or end of the month, so thirty first on Thursday. And uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a good one. The last one was a fucking hoot. Yeah, it, I, especially I, yeah, uh, I'll be covering uh, like five different things, so it should be good. Uh, Adrian Blair one says Bromedy Blank. I don't know what that. What is that? Uh, so that would be um, another Ralph thing. Uh, uh, there's a a restraining order against him from uh, Adrian, and he's not legally allowed to use her name. Okay. So they, they people will uh, post her name uh, to troll him uh, because he can't address it. Oh, he has to just like act like he doesn't see it? Yeah, exactly. Um, VHS Paradise with another $5. James Bear Internet Friends leaked his stuff. Then he made two statements about it. One in 2020 and another, another a few weeks ago. He said she agreed to it. I guess he's talking about his nine-year-old sister. Okay, so I just want... Can, okay. I, I want to see if I'm covering my bases here. So his his uh, defense of this is, um, it's okay, I was depressed, and it's okay, she agreed to it. My nine-year-old sister, whom I raped, agreed to it because I was depressed. And being harassed and, online. It, I was harassed or... so badly online, this preteen girl decided to have sexual intercourse with me. Is probably, I don't know if a judge has ever heard that one before. <laughs> um, and how did this get leaked in 2020? And some they bought that? at the time and so now it's just coming to light again yeah they, they just glossed over it in 2020 and it wasn't a big deal it was like oh hey he's depressed come on guys haven't we all raped a preteen when we we're feeling down i mean i remember getting a c when in in second grade and came came home and looked at my dog my my, my house pet and i just thought about the terrible things i would do I, I yeah, I'm gonna go watch a video on this afterwards. I, I'm I'm really interested now into how how this came about, how exactly he who he told that leaked it, oh, and well, what he thought was gonna happen. Look at you, Mister Holier than thou. What do you do to fill the <laughs> void of depression? <laughs> you don't get to rape it. I uh, yeah, I'm one of those weird people. You know, I uh, play a video game or something. Jeez, I'm a sick That's fuck. What insane. am I doing? That was, also, that was always something I thought about in college when, you know, they talked about feminism and rape culture. I've never, I mean, it could just be me. I've never met someone that thought, like, rape was, like, cool or good. You know what I mean? I, yeah, it's crazy. It's like, all right, we live in a rape culture where we're glorifying rape. Who do I know that fucking thinks it's good to f do that to someone? I mean, that's, like, fucking insane. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's nuts. Um, and then Bromedy Blank with another $2. He's really emptying the coffers here. He says, ask Jim if he's going to speed run a ban on Twitch. Yes, I do plan on doing that. He does plan on doing that. I do. I, I'm actually, I, I put some uh, thought and effort into how I'm going to do it, and uh, it should be fun and probably will only last 10 seconds when you see what's going to happen. Hell yeah. Um, well, let's see. How... How long are we into this? We're damn near three hours. Thank you so much, Mr. Mitiger, for your time. You're you're uh, you're the shit. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I had a fun time, man.
Um, is there anything else we should cover before uh, we we go? Uh, no, I think we're good. Uh, I guess everybody should go check out some James Bear content to see <laughs> what this dumb fucker thought he was gonna get away with. Yeah, we'll end on that. Now go watch the James Bear. Oh, we got we got uh, Alexi time with a twenty dollar donation. Hey Jim, how did that live stream where Worski tried to get his bud to commit murder turn out? Did anyone do time? Uh, so from what I understand, uh, nobody went to jail on that um, because the other guys involved who were also from out of the country, I think they were also Canadian, um, didn't like pursue it to push charges. And I think the cops just basically let it go. I don't know if uh, is it Alex had his gun taken away, um, but aside from that, I, I don't think anybody really got punished in that. Well, there's your answer. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've been, I've been a big fan for a while. I'm looking forward to more of your content. I hope your fucking uh, health gets better. This autoimmune system shit seems terrible. So uh, yeah, appreciate it. Praying for you on that tip. Yeah, thanks for coming up, coming on. Um, I don't know when the fucking video essay will be out, but I think uh, within the next few months. And uh, if I have yeah, any, if, I, if I have any other questions, I'll I'll just send you a message. Yeah, feel free to message me, and when you get the uh, the video up, hit me up. I'll I'll check it out. Yeah, I don't know if you want to run through it before I post it and make sure I'm not fucking anything up uh, astronomically. No, no. Feel free to do whatever you got to do. It's, just what ma- makes it, it's what makes it fun. Just make it completely facetious and shitty and paint you as this monster. <laughs> It'd be funny. <laughs> yeah. That take, would be take, take, all the, take all the audio from the stream and cut it up in a really clever way. Because <laughs> I've talked about James Bear in Israel. And then just be like, look at this guy, Jesus. The, the vitriol. Oh, this um, is terrible. But yeah, that's that. I uh, really appreciate your time. I'm going to close the stream. Everyone, if you're in here and you're a fan of my stuff, you don't know Mr. Medicare, uh, check out what you can check out. There's a lot of mirrors up. There's bit shoot. I mean, is there is there a quintessential place to get old Medicare content? Oh, I mean, it's all mirrored up on YouTube. I, I'm sure if you look around, you'll find it. Uh, it, it it's yeah, it's all over the place. So just just uh, just check it out on YouTube. There there are a ton of clipping channels. You'll you'll find a mirror. Yeah, so uh, go go check that stuff out, you guys, because odds are if there's a funny internet story at some point, um, you've covered it in a, in a hilarious way. So, again, I appreciate you, brother, and uh, yeah, thanks for coming on stream. Okay, yeah, I'll close out the uh, uh, the little meat thing. But, yeah, thanks for having me on. What a stuff.